seven spot in the sixth and then get the two run Jimmy Johnson in the eighth to uh <laughs> to get the victory. Welcome in to Gwen and Chris, Tony Gwen Jr. Chris Ello, Matt Scrabby, what seems to be or what was going to be a, a really crappy show to have to do today. Um Turned into a great show to have to do today because of the heroics of Fernando Tatis Jr., uh, who had some of the, the most beautiful pair of shoes on yesterday. Uh, wow. Padres get a Padres get a nice victory to start the homestand. And Chris, uh, you know, you know, last time that happened, Max Scherzer was on the mound. Uh, wasn't a Max Scherzer, but nonetheless, that win felt pretty good. Pretty good. Didn't even need Daniel Camarena to uh, pull no, that no. one off last night. Uh, yeah, that was something. And, you know, it's one thing that baseball has on every other sport and will never be uh, equaled is the fact that there's always a game the next day. Or, yeah. you know, there's a day off here and there. But you get my point. I mean, you can have the extreme disappointment of losing on Sunday, followed up immediately by the exhilaration of that kind of victory the very next day. And, you know, these are the kind of wins. I know it's going to be overstated. Uh, you know, Scraby's been walking around the studio. Again, he's in line to buy World Series tickets because they won that game. And we're going to talk about it for a while, but that is the kind of win you can lean on. I mean, sometime in June when you're down 7-2 to two in the late innings, you can say, hey, remember that Cub game? I mean, these are the kind of things that should and I think will help this team going forward. I want to say a couple of things. First of all, excuse me. First of all, um, what a great call. I, I said that already, but what a great call by, by Jesse there at the end. But the other thing I want to say is that, here, yeah, yeah, clap that up. There was uh, quite a few, there were some good things that happened in that ball game, aside from the seven runs and then the two run homer. Uh, the Padres, I thought, even in the, the you know bludgeoning that was happening at the time hmm. um they did a good job of of continuing to put at bats together right it, it wasn't paying off there wasn't a lot of hits but there weren't any like throwaway at bats and, and you know that's the first thing and you know toddy uh had mentioned last night that you know they were you know they were starting to talk about maybe getting the starters out of there and getting ready for the next game um that's that's a time where you could start seeing at bats be wasted and to their credit, they did. The other thing, Jackson Merrill, I know we talk a lot about his his ability to put the bat on the ball, but it was his, his eye in that eighth inning that led to that walk. It wasn't a, a gimme walk, by the way. He had to earn his way on the base pass there uh, to set that up. He continues to, you know, I know he is being slept on right now. Let's leave it that way. Let him continue to be slept on. Um, and lastly, um, Fernando. I mean, is the dude not built for those kind of moments? <laughs> he loves um, it. It seems like more than anybody else in the league. Um, and you wouldn't have won anybody else up in that, that spot given the circumstances. And the last thing I say, and this is a little bit more kind of a, a reality check. Um, the Padres scored nine runs yesterday to win that ball game. They're still not, you know, doing everything that they need to do in some of the other areas, specifically on the pitching side of things right now. Now, I know yesterday, Chris, you had talked about the starters starting to roll, and I just think you just couldn't find you couldn't find a breaking ball. That was really what what I think plagued them. But you know, Avila coming in after and surrendering four more runs that could have been um, the nail in the coffin. And that's not to 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 point out that uh, Avila didn't have his best outing out there. He still was able to keep stop the bleeding that, you know, he kind of had going there. Uh, there is just this team is still not executing completely the way they do. And, you know, yesterday was a, a good night, obviously. But if this is going to be a consistent thing, those parts of the game are, are going to have to continue. I actually wasn't upset with the offense yesterday. I know they did, took to the sixth inning before they got going, but I like what the, I was watching in terms of the A.B.s. Um, but some of the other stuff still has to to be cleaned up, I think. Well, Mike Schult, uh, I mean, he saw the same thing you were seeing, Tony, and that's why he did not pull the plug on that game because he he saw good at bats, and uh, he felt like uh, 
we got to follow this through for a couple of more innings and see what happens. Uh, the other thing, uh, watching the game on television last night, um, I this is that was April eighth. It sounded like October eighth from the moment <laughs> Fernando hit that home run right through the end of the game. I mean, the crowd, the crescendo that I could hear uh, through the television, and Don Orsillo watching on television. You know, he's doing equally as good a job as Jesse. He hardly had to even announce when Robert Suarez was pitching in the ninth inning because the crowd was telling you it was a strike one strike. I mean, every strike that Suarez threw in that ninth inning was a Josh Hader like reaction to game four of the playoff against the Dodgers. So I, I, the crowd really loved it. They were electric and, um, you know, Suarez finishes it up from what I read with 14 consecutive four seam fastballs. I mean, he was just juiced up and he said here, I don't think you're going to be able to hit this the way I'm feeling right now. From his last outing to this outing, I think it's something like 23 consecutive fastball. Like he hasn't thrown anything but fastballs. And I made that point during our game yesterday while it was happening. Like there wasn't any breaking balls in there. Wasn't the change up, which is his best secondary pitch. He was throwing fastball. Not only was he throwing fastballs, Chris, but he was splitting the plate in half. He wasn't even going corners. This was just mano y mano. Here's my hundo. Yeah. What can you do with it? Nothing. Yeah. yeah, Cody Bellinger was the only guy who got a piece of it, and he popped yeah. it straight up in the air. That's a great win. It, it, it erases the taste of Sunday, but you know it leaves you with a record of 6-7. and seven. And as you said, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. they got to play a lot better baseball overall. But I think this thing will carry you for a little while. And I just was I, I was so impressed with that crowd last night. 33,000 sounded like 43,000, sounded like a sellout. People were just going crazy. Uh, the, the, the support that this franchise has been getting the last, what, four or five years, Tony? Or has it even been that long? Is unlike what I've ever seen before. I mean, maybe going back all the way to much, 1998, once they, but once they took the, the seal off of the the coming to the ballpark in 2020, yeah, had, I think I think we had that halfway point where we had like the second opening day in in 2021. Right F- from that point on, it's been the same. Yeah, fans have been really spectacular. You guys deserve a pat on the back for that. And uh, I mean, I I felt like Suarez just was riding the the wave of he emotion. Through that been. ninth inning, and it was really something fun. I mean, when you know when you're sitting there in your living room and you kind of got the hair standing up a little bit on your arm because of just the, you know, the the feel you're getting through the television, I must have really felt something in that ballpark. So it did. Great night did. for the Padres. The now they got to build on it. The other <laughs> thing that I thought was a positive, I didn't mention this, was Hassan Kim. Um, he had the triple on a good piece of hitting. First, they ruled it a single, and I almost, like, pulled the little bit of hair I had out <laughs> because there's no way that should have been a single. My man was busting it just to try to cut that ball off. He didn't get there. Um, and then his last at-bat, he lined the left field hard. Yes, he should have uh, got a hit, a better result that time. He should have got a better result. So I, I'm hopeful that it, he starts to get going because, you know, if Kim gets going, and even if Manny is still slow to, to you know, to start to pick up the pace that he is, you still got another cog in there that's swinging the bat well. So hopefully uh, yesterday was a good sign for Ha Sung and he can continue to 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 get back to the level that he, he's been at. Um, you know who else I just want to throw a little mention on too because I put some shade on him last week, and that's Jerks and Profar. Mm. Now the, the shade – I was I, getting to that. Okay. Oh. The shade I put on Jerkson was that I didn't think he's a guy you can count on to be an everyday number six hitter. Mike Schilt agrees. He put him five, <laughs> but my, my, you know, so I'm wrong right now. He is, he's doing more than a credible job, Tony. He's doing a great job and he's on base three times last night, a walk, a couple of hits, a run scored. He's got an OPS over 900. That's almost Juan Soto territory. So, you know, if Jerks and Profar keeps this up, they're getting a, you know, a whole nother level of jerks and profile, and that is going to help this team. And it's also keeping Tommy Pham and everybody else at home. Also, you know, listen, I, I don't know. I can't sit here and tell you with a straight face that I it's he's going to be able to keep this up. But even if he doesn't keep it up at this level, 
just the way he's played left field, the things he brings to the lineup, he forces everybody in that lineup to look at what a good at bat looks like. Like, so you, you, if you fall, if you're hitting behind him and he's just put together one of his, what, five, six, seven, eight pitch at bats, and you go up there and swing at the first pitch, it's like really obvious. Like, oh man, that wasn't, uh, you know, and you roll over something, it's really obvious. So the more guys you have in your lineup like that, the more contagious those at bats become, could become to be, right? Right now, you got, um, you got Jackson putting together those type of at-bats. Bogey usually puts together those type of at-bats. Jerickson puts together. Jake is putting those type of at-bats together. And so that's what Mike Schilt was seeing yesterday. You see at-bat after at-bat after bat, you're a little reluctant to, to, to wave the white flag, and that's why um, they were able to do it. Outside of Avila, you know, we were talking yesterday a little bit about roles and, and where guys can fit. That lined up perfectly last night for what um, Mike Schilt wanted to do. You know, it did. Pedro Avila, although he struggled a little bit through his three innings, he got through it. He got him to the sixth inning, or he got him through the sixth inning. And then they they were able to bring in De Los Santos. They then brought in Wandy, who probably looked as good as he's looked this season coming out of the bullpen. And then Suarez, now I think up to 25 consecutive fastballs in the last yeah. two outings that he's had. Um, he, he looks he looks like a, 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 a – right now he looks like a bona fide like, closer, closer. I don't know that I ever felt like that prior to, to this season so far. Give him credit because he stepped into a, uh, a space that uh, needed to be filled. And uh, we are less than two weeks basically into the season. And like you said, Tony, everybody feels pretty comfortable now yeah. with this ninth inning. And that's that's a credit to him because you're right. I never felt confident when Suarez before. I always felt like he could do it, but he also might not do it. Right right now, <laughs> right. I feel like he's pretty much going to do it. and. Yeah. You know, he's going to blow a save somewhere along the line, so people will get ready for that. But I don't think it's going to affect him. I think he'll come right back the next day if he has to and get the job done. I think what's made me feel like that is the type of outings he ha has had so far. Like, mm -hmm. they haven't looked like they looked last night in every one of those outings where he just is are blowing fastball by guys one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? It's not, it's not really happening. Like, he's had some four-out saves. I think he had a five-out save where – he, he kind of had to, you know, it was a little messy, and he's able to get up zeros. And those are the type of things that gives you confidence. Like when it's not the easy one, two, three joint, it's a, you know, you know maybe a walk here, a, a, a broken bad single here, and all of a sudden you got to pitch your way out of it, and, and he's done a fantastic job. So you're right, he, he deserves a ton of credit for um, how things have gone. All right, uh, let's get to break. Still talking Padres. We also got to talk a little bit about the national championship uh, that ended uh, with a back-to-back -back title. We'll explain when we return if case you were under a rock. More Gwen and Chris on the way. Don't have time to listen to an entire...
Right, welcome back to Glenn and Chris. We are underway. Happy to be with you on a Tuesday. 2.21 is the time. Coming up on the program today, Sam Levitt will join us, talk a little deeper about this uh, great Padre victory last night over the Chicago Cubs. 9-8 final. Sam Levitt getting a uh, Gatorade bath last night for the first time in his Padre career. That's because Fernando He got Tatis, some of that last night? Oh, yes, oh, he yeah. did. Fernando Tatis Jr. in those Tony Gwynn dancing shoes <laughs> got, himself, shoes. got himself out of the way, and uh, Sam Levitt took the brunt. <laughs> he took a lot of it. <laughs> so we will talk to him about that uh, here in just a little bit. Also in the 3 o'clock hour today, another round of Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game Show. Scraby will Can't take his wait. best shot mm. at Tony Gwynn Jr., in our weekly trivia contest, also the Daily Gambit, Chris versus the fans, and the Big Five. Uh, one quick note, Padre lineup is out for tonight's game, and it's the exact same as last night's. So Beautiful. we'll run that down for you a little bit. But Run it back. Run it back, says Mike Schilt. Yeah, we put nine up there. Let's do it again. Uh, by the way, the Cubs announced their starting pitcher finally, Ben Brown. Don't know a lot about him, but I'm sure that by uh, game time tonight, Tony Gwynn Jr. will have a complete scouting report ready for the... I have a little something-something for you. You have a little something-something for us. I appreciate that. Some. Tony and uh, Jesse <laughs> have the call, of course, following Sam Levitt's pregame show, which tonight gets underway at 6.05. All right, who do we have to thank for the game starting at 7.05 oh, I, tonight? I know Good old TBS. Yeah, go for it, Tony. TBS. Yes. All right. You know, when I was <laughs> all right, back, all right. I know this is silly, but he, Scraby loves when I do this because he's a big fan of the great legendary musician Cher. Oh, yes. But way back when, when I was a little kid, <laughs> I tell you, uh, Dodger games that I went to started at 8 05. Oh, Ooh, that is whoa. true. What? That's what they didn't care. Nothing about kids or families. They just eight oh five. There is something nice about you a could parent. go home from work, have dinner, oh. change your clothes, you know, the whole thing, and yeah, then go out to the ball game. Of course, now I will say this: games didn't take quite as long. They weren't all on That's television. True. They got all you know done by maybe 10, 15, 2 hour, fifteen minutes. But still, imagine a game starting at eight oh five now. Crazy. I can't. Lose their minds. They would. Yeah, they would riot. They would. Uh, but tonight, seven oh five. So got a little extra half hour. Uh, UConn. Uh, that's just uh, five letters that also, if you look them up in the dictionary, stand for powerhouse. I, I don't know what else you can say. This team is so good in so many different ways, and they dominated Purdue just like they dominated everybody, and they yep. win their second straight national championship. Couple of quick Aztec thoughts before we get to last night's game. Number one, watching the game last night and seeing the stage of the national championship, it just kept taking me back to disbelief that last year we were in that game. Like, yeah. wow, because this is as big as it gets. And honestly, last year the Aztecs were in it. And secondly, in the very end, Zach Eady or not. Purdue was just this year's version of the Aztecs. Yeah, good, point. good enough to get there, but just no match for Connecticut. I mean, the final scores were almost identical last year's championship and last night. So, you know, congratulations. I don't know what else you can say, whether you like them or don't like them. They are that good. Tony, I've watched a lot of basketball. And there's two things that I see when I see a great team. Number one, they run their offense so well yep. that they can get an open look every time down the floor. And it can be any player who gets that open look. Yep. And I think that applies to UConn. Number two, their defense is so good, they dictate to you what they what want you, you to do. Yep. And you can't do anything about it. They let Zach Eady score 37 points last night on purpose practically so that the three-point shooters for Purdue couldn't get a single shot. And they ended up making one for seven in the game. One three-pointer the whole game. I said it yesterday. They were not going to double-team yeah. uh, Edie. 
Right. And they didn't. No. And because he didn't double team, he couldn't kick it out for wide open looks. They shot seven threes. Think That's about it. That. They only had two two attempts in the first half. I think most of those attempts came kind of in garbage time, honestly. Yeah. They, so they 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 as you said, that I think that's perfectly explained for uh dominant teams like that. Anybody can score. Their offense is run so immaculate that you know, they got counters to the counters to the counters right. it, within their offense. They know what to do when X, Y, Z breaks down and it can be anybody. And then on the defensive end, they are, they're long enough. And they're more importantly, they're athletic enough to switch everything. And then with the big men, one-on-one, they had a dude who could at least, you know, make it difficult. They knew Edie was going to get what he was going to get anyway. You know, yeah. he's a, but we've learned also on this term, as you brought up yesterday, is that that young man is a good ball player. He, he's, He's got a chance, you know, and uh, that was Purdue's best shot, and UConn knew it. Let him get his. Everybody else shut him down. That's exactly what they did. They're so good. Uh, the other thing is it's it sounds like, well, why didn't everybody else use that strategy? Because not everybody else has a 7-2 center that can defend Edie to a certain yep. extent. You know, other teams just can't do that against Purdue. They have to come down and do some double teaming and some things like that. But if we would have told you before the game that in a Zach Eady game, UConn would outscore Purdue with points in the paint, you know, you would have said, well, how's that possible? They don't have anybody 7-4, but they're so good. They're they're so good. There's just nothing you can do. And, um, you know, Purdue found that out last night. Charles Barkley uh, was on point. He said, UConn just figured – Zach Eady not going to score 70 points, so let him score as many as he wants. Right, right. And that was just really well done. I, I I, don't know. The Aztec, I'm trying to compare the Aztecs last year to Purdue this year, and I think if those two teams played each other, I think the Aztecs would have had a pretty good chance against a Purdue because the Aztecs would have had Mensa, and they would have had a Lede and a bunch of bodies they could run at Eady. And I think Brian Dutcher would have used the same strategy. Uh, you know, defensively. And I think that Aztec team, you know, would have matched up pretty well with this Purdue team. But in the end, they win 12 straight tournament games all by 13 or more points. And crazy. the Aztecs can, you know, say they were a bit of a footnote to this history because they lost each year to UConn. And uh, the good news is the Aztecs have made the final Sweet 16 now four times in program history. The bad news is UConn has won the championship every one of those years. So <laughs> it's kind of annoying, <laughs> to be it honest with you. Annoying. Somebody brought this up today, too. Where is and what is going on in stores, Connecticut, that gets kids to go there? I don't know. This is, from what I'm told, I've, I've been to Hartford, Connecticut before. Beautiful this time of year. Okay. But it's not stores. It's an hour away. It's called stores? S-T-O-O-R-S. That's where the the campus is. There's nothing there, apparently. There's nothing near there, I apparently. guess that's why, they can, that's why they're so locked in on hooping. There's I guess so. To do out there. But, I mean, Gino Ariyama has built, obviously, yeah. the all-time power there. And now the men are, you know... They got to be considered the all-time powerhouse of this era. I'm I sorry, mean, Duke. I'm sorry, make, North Carolina, but you're not right. these guys. You can make the argument that that's all of the 2000s, really. I mean, they were. They, yeah. This was it. Their fifth title since 2000. Five, and the other one was in 1999. So hmm, good enough to it's Six and 25 <laughs> years. Uh, Brian on the chat says he grew up in Connecticut, and there's nothing to do. It's I'm telling you, they lock, they're locked in on hooping. They go to the, they go to the gym, they go to school, they go to the gym, they go to school, they go to eat, they go to the gym. They yeah, but how sleep. do they get them to go there in the first place? There has to gotta, be more exciting I mean, places that kids would want to go. Clearly, these kids are in both programs are very motivated by basketball. And so you get the right kind of person in there that wants to eat, sleep. Yeah. You know what? And play <laughs> basketball. That just means that means you're going to have a good I don't think program. they have time for you know what, to be honest with you. <laughs> you always have time for you know what. I yeah, wanted to also should. I wanted to say one thing about <laughs> watching UConn play and Jay Wright did a really good job on the uh, breakdown after the game. 
but I'm going to go a little, you know, get off my lawn older guy. I still love the game of basketball when it's played beautifully like that. Yeah. All five guys at the offensive end are moving at one time. And if you watch an NBA game, unfortunately now they just don't need to do that. You know, they can give the ball in a high ball screen and everybody else get out of the way. And the NBA players are so good they can score and you can't stop it. So why do anything else? But it's fun to watch college basketball again with five guys all with a designed job and all doing their job and sharing the basketball. It, it can really be a beautiful game to watch when it's played like that. I'll say this about the NBA. That was part of the reason why everybody fell in love with Golden State. Because, I mean, I know we focus in on Steph Curry pulling from 35 feet out, but part of what made their offense so good is that you had people back cutting off of back cuts and the ball's moving around. I mean, that's kind of why they were a, a dynasty during that, that period of time. But you're right. That's the, that's the That basketball is very entertaining to watch, whether you're in there in person or whether you're on TV. Just seeing a ball like move around like that, I think is just pretty cool. Yeah. Julian, I'm oh, sorry, Chris. No, I'm sorry. Julian on the chat said that he knows why people go and play Connecticut. And I'm not sure if this number is correct, but it's $26 million in NIL money is passed around. So that would I mean, help. NIL money is passed around everywhere. Yeah, yeah but $26 saying, like, million. Dollars, I mean, that's well, a lot. Dan Hurley did say uh, on his post game, he said, you know, everything is great about this program, including the support that we get for this program. Well, they give us what we need to get the job done. But this guy's a really good coach. And, and by the way, I, he goes a little it, crazy on the refs. I will say that. I had to how about him pushing his own player. Yes, I never. I wouldn't even know what to call. <laughs> hey, remember when you got mad at Nate Oates? Why aren't you furious with Hurley? I because he's a winner. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I did. I did. When I saw that replay, I was like, I don't even know what I would call there. I've never Here, seen a coach the, do that. Actually, I, do you think he blacked out? Because I swear, when I was watching him argue that on the sideline, right, he was he saying that he, he did didn't it. touch it. Yeah, the ref looked at him and said, "Coach, you just shoved your own <laughs> you, player. You literally put your hand in his back and pushed him in the direction you wanted him it to go." It wasn't even a close, you know, call. <laughs> no. I mean, it was obvious. Yeah, Dan Hurley's a little bit wackadoodle, but. You know, I will say this: a lot of geniuses are, and this guy's yeah, no, uh, this true. guy's a pretty darn good coach. I know we got to get the break, but I also say this: they they get that support. They're only having the support, really. I mean, I don't I, UConn's football team. You know, they they yeah, any good? They don't have anything. They, really. It's yeah. all basketball, all basketball and baseball. I think. Out yeah, there. good point. Yeah. All right, we'll take a quick break. Talk more baseball. Padres great win last night, as we know. Sam Levitt. How did he end up with the Gatorade bath when it was all said and done? We'll find out next on Gwen and Chris.
239 on the clock. Tony Gwynn Jr., Chris Ello, Matt Scraby, Sam Levitt will join us here shortly. The Odyssey app lets you jump back to the moments you missed on 97.3 The Fan. While you're listening to 97.3 The Fan, you can see what you missed and click to listen on demand. Missed a guest, feature, or if something crazy things, if some crazy thing has happened from earlier, we've got you covered. Download the free Odyssey app, search 97.3 The Fan, and tap earlier today and get started. One uh, thing uh, real quick, Tony, before you go on tomorrow, tonight's game's at 7.05. Tomorrow's game is a weird start as well at 3.40. But I want to just alert everybody. Tomorrow is the uh, Scrabinator Day in the suite. The Odyssey suite, Matt Scraby, inviting all of his listeners. Oh. And he's giving out tickets. Oh. And tomorrow. Scraby's hosting? For, Scraby's hosting the big party yes, in the I suite am. tomorrow. I am. Tickets um, have been accounted for. Yeah, I know. So. He had like over 500 sign-ups sign ups yeah. to win wow. tickets. The Scraby, the Scraby Your Chronicles is, take, is starting to blow no up. No kidding, player. man. The Scraby Chronicles, we wouldn't get 500 people sign up to sit with us. In well, the as suite. Chris said so nicely yesterday, oh, a bunch of people signed up for free Padres tickets. <laughs> yeah, it is a little surprising, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very excited, and uh, I even got the preliminary green light on a Scravenator night part two later in the year yes, because he's of the sold response. the uh, sold the front office here uh, I did. on a, on wow. a second uh, yeah. occasion. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this will help or hurt your celebration tomorrow, Scravy, but I am planning oh. on coming by to say hello oh. during the festivities tomorrow. I'm so, so but, you know, I mean, I'm so excited. I'm supporting the Scraby Chronicles. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I invited Chris down there. You, you invited me? me down. I'm going to come down and say <laughs> and hi. And watch a little of the ball game. Tomorrow. I think the guy we're about to talk to is going to stop by as well because he's, let's be honest, the most popular guy. He's in the, the biggest room. hit we've got on the station for sure. Is he dry yet? I don't know. Let's ask him. <laughs> he's here. <laughs> Joining us on Gwen and Chris is none other than Sam the Great Levitt. Sam, how are you, man? Are you dry up, man? You look like you got a. Nice dose of Gatorade last night. I did. The jacket got wet. The pants got wet. <laughs> my hair was dripping. Uh, yes, but I did dry off. I. It, it's funny. It looked on the video and like in real time, like it was somewhat bluish Gatorade, but it was pretty light. And I got to tell you, my pants, which were, you know, khaki colored pants, <laughs> I have no stains on them. Um, probably have to get the jacket dry clean, but I got fortunate. That was one of my older jackets last night. But yes, a, a first for me in my my baseball career, a, a Gatorade bath, and I I didn't take the brunt of it. Fernando definitely did, but I I got part of it, so uh, I do feel like I was uh, initiated into the uh, the Gatorade cooler bath a club. Are you gonna uh, Are you gonna send a bill to uh, Manny Machado or whoever it was who tossed the Gatorade that? Uh, for is going to force you to have a bill <laughs> at the dry cleaner or are you just going to just going to eat this one yourself well there's no doubt that the guys that were involved manny and fernando could afford it but yeah but i'm thinking i'm thinking odyssey and adam clue maybe they'll cover that it, you uh, go uh, now yeah, you're please thinking. charge them yeah please take it out of my salary sam <laughs> make sure you take it out of my salary that's good uh, I, I would say uh, I don't know, man. You're gonna that might be tough. That might be tough to get that back at that point. Uh, I I will ask you about being in the building last night because yeah, uh, this ball club was down eight nothing. Um, and, and Chris kind of brought this up when the Padres scored the seven in the sixth. Uh, it was as loud of uh, of it was as loud in this building as you know I, I've heard in, in quite some time. What was your take being in the building and kind of seeing the, the comeback come together the way it did? Well, I thought the building was actually pretty loud on the Cronenworth home run. And and mm. I think that's a credit to to the fans here in general. And, I'm, and I don't just say this to say it and because we've got an audience full of Padres fans. I, I always feel like the crowd's into it, no matter really what the score is. When something good happens for the Padres, uh, the fans here generally respond. To it, And I thought it was that way last night after the Cronenworth home run. And then it sort of built from there. I thought, obviously, the momentum offensively the Padres had, but also in the stands by what you heard from the crowd. You could really feel it on the Kim two-run triple in the blink of an eye. 
Uh, it went from eight nothing to eight four, and and you could feel whether it was on the field or or in the stands. I I thought you could feel the momentum starting to shift, and then once once Bogarts hit the home run, really became kind of okay. They, they've got a real shot to to win this game. And to be honest with you, once Bogarts hit the home run, I I kind of felt like they had to win the game <laughs> because uh, you know had they lost at eight seven or tied it at eight and ultimately lost or you know taken the lead and ultimately lost uh you know i i think you could have made the argument you might as well have just lost eight nothing eight to one eight to two and and saved kind of the the heartache but um you know good for them they showed a ton of fight it's exactly what you want to see uh night in night out as cliche as that sounds they they showed exactly what you wanted last night and and it came from the big guys right it came from the guys that you want to carry this offense for the most part. So a big credit to them, no doubt. Uh, you can uh, relive it uh, on uh, tonight's uh, pregame show. Sam Levitt hosted following our program at 6.05 tonight. And then the Padres and Cubs game two of the series at 7.05. I, I think you hit on that, Sam. When they got to within 8-7, it felt like they had to win, right? You got you to gotta finish this off. And then Fernando, of course, uh, so good at stepping into the spotlight and, you know, as Tony mentioned earlier, he's the guy you want up there. And he always, uh, you know, plays a starring role and plays it well. But then you got to the ninth inning and Suarez comes in and you you have that quick thought in your back of your mind. Man, I hope he make this is a save he's really got to get because you don't want to come all the way back and then lose the game. And he had the two, three, four hitters right at the heart of their lineup. And yet the crowd would not let him, you know, yeah, not get the job done. It felt like he rode their wave to that save. Yeah, I loved it. 14 straight fastballs, right? I mean, he said to the middle of that lineup, come get it. And he blew it by him and then obviously got a pop out in there as well. But, you know, look, I think one of the real bright spots of this early season, no doubt, has been the fact that Robert Suarez no has, A, performed really well, but B, also shown you that he can give you multiple innings and he has no problem even this early in a season going and getting four or five outs. So I think in the grand picture of, of the year so far, even though they're sitting at six and seven, you'd like the record to be a little bit better. I think the fact that Suarez, at least early, has really established himself as this team's closer and somebody who can go get you more than three outs, I think is, is really, really important in, in the short and long run. And I'll also say about the rally, I talked about the, you know, the, the big guys carrying the way, and they did. But there were so many different aspects to that rally, right? Whether you want to point to, obviously, the at-bat that Cronenworth had. Something clicked for this team offensively once he had that at-bat. There was a clear change. And, by the way, it got Assad out of the game, who, who really they had not done anything against until that two-run homer. But the fact that Pedro Avila was able to settle down and give him two scoreless innings after giving up four in the fourth, the fact that Peralta and De Los Santos were able to keep it a one-run game, I mean, you know, that kind of comeback, the, the focus, the memories are always, you know, about the offense and the rally, but there are some other elements to it where, where you've got to keep that a one-run game at that time, and they did. So, um, yeah, look, Suarez, obviously a big part of it. Uh, shutting the door and, and obviously the rest of the bullpen uh, aside from the one inning from Avila they they did a good job keeping it at eight nothing and then keeping it at eight seven yeah I, I turned to Jesse at one point after Avila's inning is like after he came out I was like they got to throw up zeros from this point on and that bullpen did just that uh, you mentioned Jay Cronenworth who you know is coming off of a, a, a rough year um he seems to be thriving right now after yeah. the, some of the changes he's made and having Victor Rodriguez at the helm here, um, he's swinging a bat well. And it wasn't just the homer. It was kind of the way he's gone about he, – he went about that at bat. And it wasn't just him. Profar had those kind of – has had those kind of – Jackson Merrill had those kind of at-bats. It seemed to be – you know, and that was discussed after the game. It seemed to be what uh, Mike Schilt kind of – leaned on when he was thinking about waving a white flag. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they were able to grind out at bats like that, and you said it, Tony, whether it was Cronenworth, whether it was Profar, whether it was Merrill, the fact that they were down eight runs, and Cronenworth in particular in that spot was able to yeah. grind out that kind of at bat, and then ultimately have the result he did, 
with the home run, yeah. I mean, I, I hope it says something about this team. I mean, in the first week of the year, we talked a lot about, you know, early signs and indicators, right, that this team was different than what it was a year ago. And then we have the six-game stretch before last night where – the offense isn't doing really much and they can't score then a few runs in a game. And you've got some of the memories and the feelings and some of the things and problems we saw last year sort of creeping back in. But, you know, I, I talked on Sunday after the game in San Francisco about that game being one you could pull right from the 2023 book, put it on the table and say, yep, that, that's, that's one of those games from 2023 in San Francisco, right? And Sunday felt that way. Last night did not feel like 2023. That, that was like the kind of right there. Right. That was the kind of grinding out at bats, no matter the score, stringing hits together, moving the line, creating some momentum, and then ultimately coming up with the big swings and big moments when you need them. I mean, how about Fernando? I mean, I, I know I'm stating the obvious here, but to get knocked down on the first pitch and then the second pitch to hit one out. I mean, that is, I mean, I wasn't here for it, but that sounds to me kind of like 2021 Fernando Tatis Jr., right? The flair for the dramatic, the, the feel for the moment, the big swing, everything he did uh, b- before the injury. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, I think you hope in the long run it says something about this group, and I thought no doubt last night that felt uniquely 2024, you hope, and, and not very much like 2023, and you hope you have more nights like those. So to their credit, you hope it's something now they can build on. I don't know. You can talk all you want about that game last night, but I think it all comes down to Spike Lee. And I think <laughs> it's got to be the shoes. It's got to be Mars, the shoes. Mars money. Blackman. Mars Blackman. Yeah, not Spike Lee. Spike Lee as Mars Blackman. It's got to be the shoes. Fernando is nothing if not an entertainer, Sammy. And mm-hmm. I, I think that you know, this is one of the real pleasures that we're getting from watching this guy play on a daily basis. He lives for running out there to right field before the game and stirring up the crowd. He loves, you know, giving them a little extra flair with the shoes and a little extra flair with the dramatic. And by the way, Scraby said he timed it and he ran around the bases in exactly 19 seconds. Whether he did that on purpose or not, it's still another tribute to Tony Gwynn. Um, You know, just talk about covering this guy. And just being around him, yeah. you you get to do something that not very many of us do, and that's you know interview him. We, you know, we've been we've been begging for a Fernando interview. If any Padre people are listening, <laughs> for a while now, and we haven't had him on this show that I can recall in a while. Yeah. So I mean, you get to talk to him all the time, I and mean, he's so fun, and he, he's such an amazing presence. Yeah, I, I think there are a few things that stand about, stand out about Fernando when when you hear from him every day and you get the chance to, to talk to him. Number one, I think he's somebody who really understands his responsibility as a key player, as a star in the game and for his team. I mean, I don't think it's talked about enough. Throughout last season, I mean, he, he was up there in front of the media most nights talking, right, and and, you know, accountable and... I just find him to really understand, um, you know, what, what he means to this team, what he means to this city, how important he is, the responsibility he has between the player he is, the contract. I, I just, I, I, the, the vibe I've always had is that he really gets it and he, and he understands what that responsibility is. And he's somebody who, who obviously plays with joy and energy and he's super fun to watch. And it's part of why he's so electric. It's part of why, the fans love him here so much. It's part of the why, you know, uh, younger fans love him so much because he, he just brings this joy to the game. But he also has this, I, I think when you talk again about understanding, like an understanding of the moment. An under, he, he always says it, right? Something all, along the lines of doing what the game asks of him, you know? And, and I, I just think he understands what a game is presenting, what situations present and kind of gets what his role is and understands that he's got to step up and be that guy when his team needs it. And again, I know that sounds super cliche, but we saw it in 21 and man, we saw it here last night. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm always impressed by, by just Fernando and, and, you know, what he continues to show. And, and obviously he went through a lot, um, you know, in 22 and then coming back last year from the suspension and the injuries, but, I, I really, I'm, I'm very, very excited, you know, to see what, 
what his mid to late twenties look like and, and really the next decade or so, because I, I think there are a lot of great things ahead and, and he's going to be a, you know, a real force and a, and a real uh, kind of, you know, leading part of this team, no doubt. Pray for uh, health. Cause if he's healthy, yeah, that's mm-hmm. going to be the sky is honestly the limit for, for Toddy. Uh, Sam, as always, man, terrific, terrific uh, job last night. And thanks for coming on and, kind of peeling the curtain back for us. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Sam Levitt, Quinn and Chris. Let's get to break. When we return, roster move for the pods. On the other side, more Gwen and Chris.
Hey, here we go. Kicking off hour number two of Gwen and Chris. Uh, happy to be with you on a Tuesday afternoon. 3.01 is the time. We are rolling towards 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, Padre game, half hour later on the start time. So Sammy Levitt's pregame show gets underway at 6.05. Padres and Cubs at 7.05 tonight. No, no, Joe will be on the hill tonight. For the Friars, Ben Brown, young right-hander, who Tony Gwynn Jr. is furiously doing research on, <laughs> will be the uh, starting pitcher tonight for the Chicago Cubs. I uh, want to remind everybody, this hour brought to you by Safe Light. Got a cracked windshield? Go to safelight.com. Now, schedule your free mobile service. Let Safe Light come to you. That's safelight.com. Conditions may apply. Safe Light Repair. Safe Light, Safe Light Repair. Repair. <laughs> yes <laughs> they got extra extra bang for their buck on this one boy they did and i, I, I was, I know it was funny it. as i started to kind of watch some of the um some of the curbs now that the season season yeah, yes over, curb your enthusiasm ended i think the, other the night. first episode of this season there's a there was a um kind of a jingle that we all know. I can't remember what it is, and she st- comes in singing it at the very beginning of the episode. Yes, and he and it's was annoying. It was Larry. annoying, Larry. <laughs> yeah, the final curb your enthusiasm episode was this past That's Sunday was. night. Eight wait eight seven seven wait eight wait. Yes, oh, it was uh, on Cars for Kids. Is that yeah, the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those. Yeah, yeah. She was singing that one. <laughs> Everything annoys Larry. That's the the cloth from which I'm built. Hmm. Um, I, uh, we have a couple of tickets to give away also, not right now. Chris knows, put the phone down, put the phone down. Uh, but we're going to give you a couple of tickets to the, uh, Padre cub game tomorrow. Uh, first 40,000 fans tomorrow going to get a Manny Machado bobblehead. You can get your tickets at Padres.com slash tickets, or stay tuned to the program. You can win a pair right here. On Gwen and Chris. And this is not Scrabinator night tickets, just for anyone who's going to show up. And right. I just want to make that clear. Yes, the Scrabinator like- tickets are all accounted for, but yeah. we do have a couple of tickets left to go to the ball game tomorrow. So stay tuned for your chance to win. Best of luck on that. And we'll let you know how you can win in just a little bit. Scraby has his hand up, either that or he's giving me a. No. A Brandon salute. on the chat <laughs> salutes. Brandon on the chat has a great idea for the countdown. Ideas commercial melodies like the safe light or um oh, for an upcoming uh, countdown. Uh, we <laughs> are farmers, something like that. Yeah. It's quite amazing how those things <laughs> stick in your head. It is quite amazing. Oh, here comes Jorge. 877 cash now. JG Wentworth. <laughs> JG Wentworth. <laughs> That's the one she was singing. That's oh, that's the one. It wasn't Cars for Kids. <laughs> no, she was singing that one. Ah, Almost sure. That's Almost a good sure idea, what? Brandon. That's a good yeah, idea. Put that in your uh, in your bank of knowledge, Scraby. Uh, there was one move made by the Padres today. Roster move. Somebody was sent down, and somebody was activated. Uh, I would ask you guys if you cared to guess, but I know you already know. So uh, yeah, I mean, uh, um, it's interesting though. I I wouldn't expect this guy to be sent down at this point, but it's not shocking. And at the same time, I understand the move they're making because uh, Brent Sullivan coming up from Brent. what I've been reading has been raking at the ball in the yeah. minor leagues, and he gives the Padres a little what more was maneuverability. This, what was the numbers? He's Dave, a third catcher. Like Dave Marcus has the seven. Update. 17 for 46. Yes. Uh, Sullivan was down down there. Yeah, so it's uh, he needs to come up, but uh somebody has to go down so Graham Pauly gets the uh the uh the the bad news. Although, you know, he's a young player. He's got to be so excited that he made this club. He hit his first home run and I think the future's bright for Graham. I don't think he goes down I said there 42, and stays down I meant there. 36. 17 for 36. 17 so for 36. That's 500. Yeah, yeah he's, 500. He's balling. I yeah. didn't mean to shortchange him like no, that. No, you shortchanged him. Yeah, he's hitting five hundo pretty much. So, uh, K, uh, Brett Casey Sullivan. Who did he play for? The Aztecs or somebody? Uh, Brett <laughs> Sullivan comes up and. Uh, Can I ask you? Grandpa are you saying Brent down. or Brett? I'm not sure. Okay. Honestly, I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank you. Just <laughs> <laughs> at least you're honest. I believe it's Brett. All right. Like it's Brett. Yes. Thank yeah. you. 
Just want to make sure. I didn't have to make that <laughs> distinction because I don't I broadcast think he, the I games. I think he used both because he wasn't right. sure. He said I just Brent, used them both, <laughs> and I figured that you would hear what you wanted to hear out there. <laughs> I'm just trying to save you, Chris, before Thank we you. get 10,000 messages. Oh, I know. We'll get them for sure. Uh, Padres got seven runs in the sixth inning last night. It Wait, is... did you guys say Did you guys say he went down? Yes, yes I did. Grand Grand Pauly. Pauly. Where was I? Uh, I don't know. He said Polly. Were... He just didn't say his oh, name. Oh, gotcha. He okay. said Polly. Yeah, right. Polly's going down. Um. Padres seven runs sixth inning last year, seventh time that they have scored four or more runs in an inning this season. So that happened in their 12th game, 13th game. Last year, it took them 76 games for that to yes. happen. Yes. So, wow. Little sign that things are a little different this year. Uh, they're putting the crooked numbers up there. And um, I think they lead baseball in that category in terms of four run innings. They just got to get some more innings, you know, but eh, it's all still a nice work in progress. I didn't ask Sammy this. Do you think, Tony, as it sits right now, the euphoria of last night, do you think, I don't know, by the end of May, the Padres will add to this roster? I mean, like uh, signing a free, is that too difficult of a question to ask? Uh, it's not a difficult question to ask. It's a diff difficult question to answer. I don't. I don't know that um I don't know that they will make a move by May. Okay. I don't know that they're I don't I don't necessarily think there's a a real time frame right now. I mean right now I think it's a fill out process. I think um they're still evaluating, I would guess. We what two weeks in three weeks in the season? That's two it. weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So but I, I mean, it also said it also needs to be known that if you if you are of the mind out there that thinks that they should add you know, the other teams in baseball don't have to wait for you to make a decision. They can add if they want to. So there's that risk if you wait. Yeah. But at the same time, like I said, maybe they don't think they need to wait. I'm not, or, you know, they don't need to do this. It's hard to answer. It's hard. It's hard to, well, the team they're putting out there right now is getting the job done half the time. So you know, I don't know that anybody they sign is going to, change that dramatically is right. what I is what I is what I think they're looking at. That's what they're thinking. Yeah. What are you thinking, Scrape? I'm Me? always curious to get your thought on this. Um you think they gotta add? It's clear he doesn't have any he hadn't had any thoughts about no, it. No, I um, no, I no, I I have had thoughts. I have a thing he's called got the his own show, show. Oh so he I wants have to, to keep, deliver it. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I don't want to keep it. Keep it for his show, Chris. No, I think they're not going to add because of they like the nucleus that they have right now. I mean, what are you going to do? Sit Jerks and Profar down and no. put Tommy Pham there? No, I mean, Tommy Pham's not going to. I think that they're not going to add because they want to save whatever money they have left to make a necessary addition right. at the trade deadline. That's good. That's considering good. they're going to be, they think they're going to still be in contention, and we all hope that they're going to be in contention. Kenny, and if you add now, you may not be able to address a need at the trade deadline. Good point. Kenny says like on the chat, um, it's the million dollar question in a couple of weeks. What do we do with DH when Manny goes back to third base? Uh, we that, deal with that, that in a couple of weeks? <laughs> that and you know, that is why I don't think they'll make a move right now, is because they don't have to. When we start getting closer to uh Manny moving to third and us needing a DH. Then you start to kind of have that a little bit before then is when you start to have that. It sounds like end of April is what the kind of soft time frame is. Yeah. So, you know, around that time is when the discussion starts to happen. You know, it's a strange season already when the Pittsburgh Pirate fans are starting to feel their oats so much so that when former Padre David Bednar blew the save today in Pittsburgh's loss to the Tigers, he was booed vociferously <laughs> by all of a sudden, you know, these Pirate fans who expect, you know, win, win, win. Pirates well, are now eight and three after Bednar lost oh, the maybe, game today. Or maybe they know it's coming and they just are holding just on. Just getting it out of the life. way early. I feel like this is the exact same thing that happened last year. It is. Yeah. Except well, they, they got, got all the way to like close to the all-star break yeah. before they started to kind of 
do what the pirates do. Yeah. Remember well, when I was the biggest Drew Maggi fan on the planet last year? Who? The, the guy on the pirates who was in the minor leagues for like 13 years and finally got to play. I don't remember. Oh, poor Drew Maggi. I honestly, uh, I don't, I don't, do I know you, you were locked into a baseball season, but these are things I remember. Uh, do you remember Chris? I barely, barely. <laughs> I do remember you talking about this guy. Uh, David Bednar, by the way, was one of those guys that the Padres traded to the Pirates yes. in the Joe Musgrove move. And he's been an all-star for the Pirates. But uh, they booed him today pretty pretty hard at PNC Park after, uh, you know, the Pirates are now 8-2. and two, or If eight, I'm not mistaken, nine he's and from two, there, They're now 9-3. and three. Sorry? If I'm not mistaken, he's from that area. He yes. is. He's from Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. So they, yeah. just, uh, they just drilled him. Man, and, what the uh, heck is wrong with them? Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, tough the fans are tough. tough crowd. Fans are tough. The other day game today, the Orioles beat the Red Sox 7-1, to one, if you're wondering. Uh, we got a daily gambit coming up in just a little bit. Remember, the show is a little longer today. We'll be on until 6 o'clock. Uh, there was one other baseball note I wanted to share with you guys um, with before. Uh, I, I thought it was kind of... Um, Angel Hernandez? Well, we can go there. Well, I, I, I didn't know <laughs> well, where you were going. No, that's fine. Well, uh... That's better than it, that's better than anything else I have. Um, Angel Hernandez is still umping in Major League Baseball, and it doesn't seem like there is even anything resembling a game, Tony, that he gets through without a major controversy. Angel Hernandez. I don't know if it's just corner. because. I don't know if it's just because it's happened his last two games that right. he's been involved with something, but. You're right, man. Like, and it doesn't seem like the 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 questionable calls are like. It seems like they're getting worse and worse, worse the, and worse. He the, is the, Angel Hernandez as a Twitter users or ex users best friend because he gives content oh, every he single gives, game. He gives the he gives the world of X so much fodder. <laughs> and is there this nothing that can one, be done? Because we're going to get him eventually at a Padre game somewhere, and everybody's going to go me, crazy. Chris, Dave Marcus complains about not getting angel martina angel angel hernandez all the time so why i will know i'll matter of fact i'll know before the show starts when it happens and i'll be sure to alert no, wait, you Dave guys marcus wants angel yeah, hernandez? i don't honestly know what his obsession is with angel he just makes sure every time we pull up to a first game of the series one of the first things out of his mouth aside from hey one of you has got the interview today at five whatever yeah. 45 the next thing out of his mouth is no Angel Hernandez. Like he seems to be, <laughs> he seems to be beside himself. It's a really Angel weird thing. Is not here. Can wow. you pop him on the mic? Is he around? I want to. He's we, around. Okay, we need hey, to talk to him about this. For a second. We need to talk about this. <laughs> I well, the drama, the excitement. Oh, you oh, want the added drama? Okay. Added, added entertainment value with Angel drama. Yeah, <laughs> you're right about that, Dave. And and I think baseball's missed that. The one thing replays taken away is the Earl Weaver, Tommy Lasorda, you know, Bobby Cox type of histrionics that used to to be fair. You know, we be don't fun have for us be... to watch. To be fair, we don't have enough uh, managers with those type of personalities that could, like, really, really make you miss it. These guys nowadays, <laughs> I think th there's a few that would be pretty good. I know Mike would be pretty good. Craig Council would be pretty good still. Um, but the list isn't as long the as The list isn't very be. long, man. It's start trying it to used to be of... every manager in baseball had a little something-something in their right. game to, to right. come out and argue. Lou Pinella was another one. Billy oh, Lou Martin. Pinella, you knew some dirt Billy was Martin. Get kicked. Come on. I mean, these yeah. guys were legendary. He might take a base with him. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, <laughs> yeah. they, You had those type of... I Lloyd don't McClendon know, everybody... did take a base with him one time. They had to hold <laughs> up the game for like a half an hour <laughs> till somebody could find a base. He, he took it with him. the field with the base like that. He did. Y'all not playing anymore because I'm taking this base taking with the me. base with me. Yeah, baseball <laughs> managers used to be a little bit more. Can you entertain? Can you imagine though the talk after the game if a baseball manager was stealing bases? It would be everybody. Oh, look at this guy. He's just a big I, baby. I disagree. I think it was really entertaining. Yeah, I, 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 we all you. understood it. It wasn't like he just took the base. It yeah. was a bad call at the base. He was oh, like, yeah, well, no, basically, he was arguing a call. Yeah. And yeah. 
It's and, no different than Lupinella covering up the home plate. He's like, you don't need to see this because you're already not seeing it, so I'm just going <laughs> to cover it up even more. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, Sean on the chat says, we need more Dave Marcus, and we've been working well, on we it. we always listen, have the – I talked to Dave, Dave last week, and he said he's you know up for doing a segment oh, again this year. this is news. Oh, it is. Yeah, I don't know. Dave is a little, you know, he's, he's he's he doesn't want his 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 star has come and he seems to kind of like it where it's at. He doesn't really want to. I don't think he wants to keep coming on, man. I just have this feeling he is wow. tapped out. Wow, Dave, is that I true? Never said that. Oh, oh I'm sorry. He said he never said. He, he said he never said that. <laughs> All right, we can do a half season of get to know Dave. We it don't need to do a weekly. weekly. Yeah, we could, we could do uh, bi weekly. Or like. yeah, yeah, whatever Dave wants. We just want he Dave on want the to be, show. He doesn't want to be typecast, ladies and gentlemen. Like, <laughs> so I think that's probably why we're, we're we're dealing with. So we'll come up with a different way to get him typecast. <laughs> Less is more, Tony. Less is more. <laughs> there you hey. go. You always got to keep the fans wanting. Thank that you, is Dave. Not a bad idea. Thank you. All right, we'll take a quick timeout. Tony's got to get ready for the game, but he'll be back with us for several segments, including the Fantabulous Sports Game Show which is coming up at the bottom of this hour. Uh, when Scraby and I return, we'll hit the daily gambit after traffic. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danek. Good afternoon. A couple of problems already crashed and cleared out of middle lanes on Northbound 805, just past El Cajon Boulevard. Also a collision on South 163, just before the 5, it's over to the right shoulder. Also getting reports of a possible vegetation fire, West 52 past Mast Boulevard, it's over to the right shoulder. I'm Kelly Donick with Gwen and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Listen to your favorite 97.3 The Fan talk shows break down every San Diego.
we are. 322. Casello, Tony Gwynn Jr., Matt Scraby, a round of Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game Show is coming up in about 10 minutes. Stick around for that. <sighs> Scraby, prepare for that. How am I supposed to prepare? I don't know the topic. That's right. I do. I Never mind. You have a feeling? No, not really a feeling, but I feel like I'm due. I hope today is the day. At some point, I am I really due. hope today is the day. It's been, uh, been a drought for you <laughs> in the fantabulous sports game show for sure that's coming up stick around for it you can uh, play along uh, a couple of quick college basketball notes before we get to the daily gambit UConn this is like I seems like a non-story uh, in the final AP poll came out today and they ranked Duke number one no of course they didn't the uh, UConn's number one Yes. Right. Uh, Aztecs finished seventeenth in the nation. Not bad. That's not bad at not all. Not a bad season coming off of a national championship appearance and losing half that team. No, and not not so bad that they finished ranked because they were fighting against the the rankers all year long. Trying they to went get in, and out, in and out of the rankings all year. They finished seventeenth in the nation. One other college basketball note that you will love, Scrabe. Although I don't think it's going to have any effect, your guy, Cream Abdul Jabbar, otherwise known as Milk Chamberlain, <laughs> otherwise known as Larry Nerd. You can't do that anymore, though. Huh? You can't call him that anymore. Why not? Oh, he's... Because he's leaving Indiana State. Yeah, he yeah. can't be Larry Nerd anymore. He can be the other two, though. Robbie Avila, Indiana State. L into the transfer portal he goes. So, I don't know. You're going to put a call into Brian Dutcher and beg him? For say oh, one thing, uh, Avala, me? Yes, yes, yes. I, wouldn't that be something if he came here? Avila can play. I, I mean, watching him, the two games I watched him in that NIT, he's he's a brilliant passer for a big guy. And uh, he can shoot. Yeah, he's a scorer. You know, I don't know about his defense. That's something that – Who cares that, about defense these days, Well, Chris? the Aztecs do. Oh, okay, and that's yeah. one of the reasons that's why true. they're so good. Uh, UConn's on campus celebration last night, mostly peaceful. Thank you, UConn students, for not tearing apart the entire campus last night. Yeah, that is good. That is are good. they just getting so used to it now that they just well, it's they just another you, night. Remember, we said last week they took down yeah. all the light poles they and did. everything so that <laughs> they people did. couldn't tear them down themselves. And one final thing, which I found interesting but not shocking. 14.8 million viewers, the average for mm. last night's UConn-Purdue game. Wow. Falling 4 million short of the number who watched South Carolina beat Iowa in the women's final. Do you think that's a time thing? Sunday is a much better day for this stuff. Monday night doesn't seem like a great night. I don't know. This thing's been Monday night forever and ever and ever. It's been established. I I think this is just impressive for women's basketball. That's all I think. So I agree. All right, let's get to the daily gambit. Do you like money? I think about money a lot. Do you like money without doing anything? Uh, duh, winning. Do you want to make money while watching sports? I think Washington is immortal luck. Washington! Woohoo! If you answered yes, this is your segment. Just don't blame us when you lose. Nothing is ever your fault. It's your game. Take it. Gwen and Chris go through the top bets of the day in The Daily Gambit on 97.3 The Fan. Daily Gambit is our daily sports betting segment here on Gwen and Chris. Please, everybody, gamble responsibly. Now, let's start with the bets that we did last night, uh, and then we'll get into some of Chris's bets. I made a parlay, a parlay, and it didn't come through. What, what a shocker, Chris. I had over 24 and a half Zach Eady points. That is correct. He ate the... I think he had over 35, maybe 36, 37, 37. Yeah. Uh, Braden Smith needed over six and a half assists. I believe he had eight. He did. Zach Eady needed over 12 and a half rebounds. I think he only got like nine. Didn't make it. I no. think he had 10. Uh, you mentioned Braden Smith, the Purdue point guard. He had eight assists. Those were all the eight assists that Purdue had. 
Really? Yep, that's it. They <laughs> okay. didn't get any more. It, it is amazing because I, I don't think I've ever really seen a team shoot as well as Connecticut had had all tournament long. It just seemed like everything they shot was going in. That's because they get a great shot every time down. They run their offense to perfection. Yes. They're sublime in how good they are. Sublime, he says. Correct. All right, well, then we did do the Zachity point total separately, and we both went over, and we were both correct with 37 points. UConn was a seven-point favorite last night over Purdue. Chris chose UConn. I chose Purdue, and Chris will win this one because they won by 15, 75 to 60. Yes, your dad comes up short. He does. In the uh, Gwen and Chris NCAA Pick'em Pool. I believe George was the winner this year. George would be the winner, but here, let me, because uh, Dave is also, a, a Dave, there's a listener in the chat. I don't want to give out your last name, but you uh, were very proud of the fact that you finished fifth in our whole thing, so good. that is really good. My brother also really, really wants a shout-out for finishing eighth in the pool. I say no. Okay, no, no shout-out. Shout out. <laughs> shout-out has been revoked, Eric. Shout-out shout has been uh, turned down. I will also give Brian some credit. Uh, he came in second place. He had 151 points. George had 152. Brian listens to the show That's and really the station good. quite often. Good job out there for yeah. all of you yes. in the top seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, top seven for sure. Yes. It just hit me. Cutting it off at seven. No, yeah. Anybody outside of seven, you're losers. That's right. Especially that number eight spot. I hope exactly. he heard this. I hope he heard this. All right. Next All right. bet was over under 143 and a half total points in the game. You went over, I went under, and it was under 135. Yes, not enough three-pointers were made. That's why the number was under. Purdue only had one three-pointer. Yes. UConn shut them down. Cubs Padres over under seven and a half runs total in the game last night. Chris said over. I thought it was going to be some sort of pitching duel. It was not. They had 17 runs total in the game. Thanks to that sixth inning and the eighth inning for Fernando. Finally, the Vancouver Canucks were one and a half goal favorites over the Golden Knights. Chris chose Vegas. I chose the Canucks and the Canucks did win the game, but not by enough. They only won four to three. I was four and one yesterday. Uh, you were two and three, so I get off to a good start this week. Here we go for tonight. Start out in the mile high, thin air of Denver. Really? Arizona Diamondbacks, Colorado Rockies, Colorado, Colorado. Over under eleven runs for this game. If it means anything, last night Colorado won seven to five. Tonight Merrill Kelly pitches for Arizona. Former Padre stalwart Cal Quantrill for the Rockies. Do you have the guts to bet under 11 runs at Coors Field? It, it, no, you don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Do you? You know, even if you don't get it against the starters, the Colorado bullpen has to come in at some point. Yeah. And they're worse than the starters. Yeah. Got to go over. It's unbelievable how bad the Rockies are, but they did win, they did win, win. last night. They did win. The whole NL West, by the way, is under 500, except for the Dodgers. It's not how people envisioned that That's not that we start. envisioned it. We envisioned it the opposite. The NL Central's all over 500, except for the Cardinals. So Interesting. It's a little bit backwards here. Is Oliver Marmol going to be fired here? Doesn't seem like it. Seems like they love him blindly. In St. Louis. It's probably not a good thing to do. No, he has not been uh, gotten the job. It's a little early to fire is, him this year, is, but, but don't forget. I mean, they have their record was the same as the Nationals last year. Cardinals are not used to that. Like the Padres had a terrible season last year, but the Cardinals really had a terrible season last year. Yeah, Padres at least finished over 500 when it was all said and done. Speaking of the Padres, minus one and a half runs tonight mm. over the Cubs. They got to build on that win from last night, don't they? Joe Musgrove, I'll take San Diego and give a run and a half. What do you know about Brett Brown? Nothing. Tony said he was going to give us a scouting report and, and then, then he weaseled out well, the scouting he, report. He weaseled out because he has to go look it up. I've never heard <laughs> of Ben Brown. Yeah, I'm going to go over as well. Or I'm going to go Padres. Go Padres. Sorry. <laughs> uh, on to the NBA we go. Lakers are three points over Golden State at Los Angeles. Um, I don't know, LeBron James, is he just a, is he a game-time decision every game? I don't know how you ever bet on this stuff. He didn't play on Sunday night, and, of course, they got you know beat up, and then Anthony Davis left the game, and 
Who knows who's playing tonight for the Lakers, but they've played great ball down the stretch. Warriors are pretty much safely in the postseason oh, as well. Oh, man, like a week and a half ago, Draymond yeah. getting ejected was like going to kill their shot at getting no, in the, the playoffs. Warriors, uh, the Warriors won two or three in a row, and the Rockets lost two, three in a row. So they're firmly in so there. So the Warriors are five games ahead with four games to play. That tells me they've clinched. <laughs> All right, so they don't need to play them. Both teams have clinched a playoff spot. Lakers are still hoping they're a game and a half out of moving all the way to the sixth spot, and they could avoid the play-in entirely. Well, then I'm going with the Lakers. They have something to play they for. They do have more to play for, and it makes sense. So I'll take the Lake show. Phoenix minus eight and a half over the Clippers. Clippers. Clippers have won three in a row. But not a lot of belief in them tonight, especially when Phoenix has to win to try to hold on to that sixth spot in the West. Quick question. Yes. Is there any talk about how much of a failure this Suns team has been with all of the players that they have it's acquired? It's a little early to do that. I mean, they're you know going to be in the playoffs. Uh, if they get knocked down in the first round, then it's fair. What happened to them last year? I don't remember. I'll have to look um, it up. Let me look it up. Some of these seasons run together in oh, my yes. mind. I think they lost to Denver in the semifinal last year of the West. I'll check it but out. Check it out. I'll take the uh, Phoenix Suns having to win tonight. How about you? Uh, I will, too. We've agreed on all four so far. Okay, great. Uh, one last one, Luka Doncic. Dallas Mavericks playing in Charlotte against one of the worst teams in the NBA. Charlotte Hornets have 19 wins. Dantich over under 31 and a half points. He is the leading scorer in the National Basketball Association. He averages 34 a game. What's the highest average for a season ever? ever? Oh, it's got to be Will. Uh, 50.1. Yeah. It's Other be than Will. that, yeah, that, that'll that'll probably hold up for a while. Yeah, I think so. That would be imagine 50.1 <laughs> for the season. I mean, a guy gets a 50-point game now, and it's, you know, pretty newsworthy achievement. You're right about the Suns, though. They beat the Clippers four games to one, and then they lost to the Nuggets in the next round. Got it. Yeah. Well, they did add Bradley Beal, yeah, but he's been hurt on and off all year. I just think Kevin Durant's, well, he's been hurt, too. Mm -hmm. anyway. We'll see if they get healthy enough to make a run. Uh, Luka, 31 and a half. Oh, yeah. Um, Better go. We're running out yes, of time. Yes, over. Over. I'll just say under because we haven't disagreed on one yet. Christmas Fantabulous Sports Game Show is coming up when we return.
Spiros Mediterranean Cuisine. If you love it like I do, visit Spiros. Authentic Mediterranean Cuisine, Coronado, La Jolla. Now at the ballpark at Petco Park for dining or takeout options, visit SpirosCuisine.com. Chris Ello, Tony Gwynn Jr., Matt Scraby, Gwynn and Chris. Time to play Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game Show. From the night. And Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Traffic is sponsored by Airmax, San Diego's highest rated heating and air company. Visit them at airmax.com. Got a few problems here, guys. One of them is this crash on Westbound King Freeway right at the Southbound 125 connector there over to the right shoulder. We've also got a collision on Southbound 805 right at the 905. Looks like a motorcycle involved in this one. It's a left lane block. Tow truck is rolling up to assist with that. And going to find on the Northbound 5 right before Carmel Valley Road, a collision involving couple vehicles trying to get that moved over to the right shoulder. Looking for the best in HVAC? Choose Air Max, San Diego's highest rated heating and air company with free diagnostics on all repairs and estimates. See why over 1,300 happy customers have given Air Max five-star Yelp reviews. See Air Max today at airmax.com. I'm Kelly Danik with Gwen and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 to fan. Hey, all you beautiful people out there, it's time to play one of our favorite games of the week. All right! We like, like to call it... Oh, I'm going to go... Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game Show! And it starts right now on 97.3 The Fan. Hey, welcome to uh, Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game Show. I am Chris. I am the host of the show. Uh, before we get started today, shout out to one Mudcat, Mark Grant, who when I ran into him last week at Padre Baseball, first thing he asked me last Tuesday night at the ballpark, oh, no. who won the Fantabulous Sports Game <laughs> Show today? <laughs> that was the very first thing he wanted to know. Oh, even Mark Grant knows I stink at this game. Yeah, he does now because oh. I told him he lost oh. once again. Uh, anyway, uh, to all of those of you who do follow the Fantabulous Sports Game Show, you know that Scraby normally loses. Okay, he is winless since it. the month of February, but maybe today is the day as he takes on Tony Gwynn Jr. You can participate out there along with the guys and uh, try to think of as many correct answers as you can come up with, and uh, we'll get started here. It's a very uh, simple, uh, straightforward category today. There are 13 correct answers is all. Ooh. So it's uh, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty limited group here of correct answers. Uh, the guys will take turns guessing correct answers. When they get one, they move on. When they miss, they get a strike. First person to seven correct answers wins, or first person to three strikes loses. And uh, you guys ready? Tony Gwynn Jr., you ready to roll? Yes, sir. All right. Scraby's wearing his Friday the 13th T-shirt. Oh, yeah. The many faces of Jason. I don't know that that means anything with 13 correct answers. Maybe, there's a, maybe there's a connection that will help you You somehow, know I believe Scrape. in these things. I know. That's why I brought it up. Thank Here you. is today's category. Pretty simple. Since the year 2000, turn of the century, there have been 13 different winners of the NCAA Men's Basketball oh, no. Tournament. 13 different teams have won the NCAA Tournament. Some have won it more than once, obviously, because we are in 2024. But you need to name the 13 teams that have won an NCAA Basketball Championship since the year 2000. Scraby, since you are uh, coming off a loss, you get to decide whether you'd go rather go first or have Tony Gwynn Jr. go first. Uh, I am going to go first. You're going to go I first? I actually feel kind of confident about this. Feel good. All right. Yeah. Well, if you go first and get seven for seven, then uh, you would win right there. So it is possible yeah. for you to change your luck today, but I will see. Thanks. All right. Hang on. Let me make sure Mark Grant is paying attention. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> first answer for you. Obviously, UConn. UConn is correct. You know how many they've won, by the way? This uh, this um, century, Three, four, five, four, four. They've won five, five. this century. That's oh, unbelievable. Oh, four, 11, 14, 23, and 24. And the things that 11, 14, 23, and 24 have in common, those are the four years that the Aztecs made the Sweet 16. <laughs> oh, see, we like when UConn's going deep, at least. <laughs> That's right. We have deep. a good year. Unfortunately, <laughs> they wind up on top in the end. All right, UConn is correct. Tony, your turn as we uh, get started here. One of the uh, 12 remaining NCAA basketball champs this century. How about the Duke Blue Devils? Duke Blue Devils on the board with three. 
They won in 01, 2010, and 2015 for Duke. So it's, uh, boy, it's been nine long years since Duke has celebrated a championship. I hope they're okay out there. Uh, 1 1. Scraby, you are up, my friend. Virginia. Virginia, going back to 2019. That is, he just gave himself a bell before I even said anything. Well, That's how knew. confident he was. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, Virginia uh, won it the year after being eliminated by a 16 seed in the first round. Purdue nearly was able to match that feat, but uh, obviously came up short last night. Virginia, do you remember who they beat in overtime of the national championship oh, game in 2019? I do not. Texas Tech. Texas Tech, guns up, Red Raiders. That was a great game. Went into overtime. The only overtime game, by the way, hmm. of this century in the national championship. I beg your pardon. There's been two. Sorry. There's one other. Anyway, Scraby's up two to one. Tony, you're up. Who do you got? I believe Baylor got one in there. Baylor the got one in there as well. Yeah, 2021. That was the one that uh, nobody was uh, allowed to attend the games. It was after COVID, 2021. Right. Baylor won the uh, championship, I believe, in Indianapolis. Gonzaga? Gonzaga was their opponent. The Gonzaga was going for an undefeated season, and uh, Baylor just whooped them in the final game. But uh, I think the whole tournament was played in Indianapolis that year because of the COVID. Oh, the COVID. <laughs> yeah, my goodness. All right, uh, we are 2-2, and uh, I think this is going to get a little difficult. There's some pretty good ones on here. But so far, so good. Nine correct answers remaining, Scrape. I'm going to go with uh, Villanova. Villanova. Jay Wright's team. Saw plenty of Jay Wright last night on the uh, telecast. Uh, 2016 and in 2018, Villanova won in between. They did not get a a, uh, back-to-back, but they uh, prevailed in 16 and 18. So two championships for Villanova during the – 21st century. Scraby takes a 3-2 lead. You guys are rolling through this category so far. Uh, Tony Gwynn Jr., you're up with eight answers remaining. In honor of his departure, how about Kentucky? Kentucky. John Calipari. John, your boy, John Calipari. On his way to Arkansas. Kentucky. Kentucky took the title in 2012. That's it? And, uh, yeah, that's their only one this century. Wow. They won uh, quite a few under Rick Pitino in the late 1990s. They actually won two. But, uh, yeah, Kentucky is the correct answer. We're tied at three, and there's seven correct answers remaining. No strikes on the board. You guys are just uh, having your way with this category to this point. Well, Mr. Scraby. I'm going to pull one out of the hat. You may. Carmelo Anthony, Syracuse Orange. Syracuse Good Orange. One. Carmelo. Carmelo's uh, greatest it's moment. The year I graduated high school. I'll never forget it. For 2003, something. Carmelo and the Syracuse Orange men. They were the Orange men then. Oh, really? Yeah, now, now they're just the Orange. Uh, took the title, and uh, that was Jim Beheim's big moment. As it turned out, it was the last bit of postseason success ever for Carmelo Anthony. He did not have any in the NBA. I'm sorry, but I always like to get that dig in on him. So sorry, Carmelo fans. I know, totally unnecessary. He's a Hall of Fame player, but uh, he never had much luck in the postseason. All right, uh, Syracuse uh, gives uh, Scraby a lead of four to three. Six correct answers. Are you guys going to run this 13 for 13? I feel like I got a shot. You think he's going to miss one somewhere along the line? Oh, I, I I don't know yeah. if I have a shot, but all right. What I do got you got, some. Tony? Um, Tony can't afford to miss one though. The way you're playing today, Scrape. Oh. I'm kind of impressed. You just said something. I can't remember. Oh, you said. Oh, that's what you said. You said Rick Pitino. That made me think. No, of Louisville. No! Oh boy, sorry. I didn't want to give any hints along the way. Louisville in 2013, uh, the interesting thing there, they lost to Kentucky in the semifinals in 2012, but Patino came right back in 2013. That is correct. Is that the game the dude had his leg break? break? I'm pretty sure it was. Yes, yeah, it for was. Louisville, the uh, Louisville Cardinals, Cardinals. With, the, uh, with the title there. So that ties things back up. 4-4, four, four, there are only five correct answers left. Nobody has a strike yet. It's a very impressive performance. Scraby, you think you can get to the finish line? Yes. Here comes a strike right here. No, Mario Chalmers, Kansas Jayhawks. Mario Chalmers, Kansas Jayhawks. Scraby's looking sharp. 
They won not only that year, but they won a few years ago in 2022. What was that? They that beat North indeed, Carolina right? uh, a yeah. few years ago, and they beat Memphis in that classic overtime game. Thanks to Mario Chalmers, uh, beat out my boy Derek Rose and Memphis mm -hmm. that year. Remember, Scraby's got a six-five lead. Is that right? No, five-four. Five-four. Can see the finish line. Can he get there? I don't know. <laughs> Tony Good Jr. Know. trying to keep the heat on here and tie it back up with four correct answers remaining. Now it's just hard to remember who's been set. That's the tough one. Yeah, that could be. That's it could come into play here. All right, what I'm going to do is use one of these I've been holding on to because I can't quite remember if the other one has been set. So I'm going to say Mateen Cleves in Michigan State in 2000. Wow. Oh, wow. That is cutting it close. That is correct, though. Oh, wow. In 2000, Michigan State took the championship. They are the last Big Ten team to win a title. That's a little clue for Dang, if you're wow. guessing forward. Uh, Big Ten has not won since then. Uh, Tony does tie it up 5-5. Five, five. We're down to three correct answers remaining, and uh, neither of you have a strike yet. You guys have been letter perfect to this point. Scraby. Give it up, Scrape. Sign. Oh, he's getting a little nervous because I think he feels he has a chance to win today. I, I I have to say this team. I hope they've won, but North Carolina. Yeah, North Carolina's okay, won. Good, that is good. correct. Yeah, Very good. They Scraby. were said already. That's yeah. why I didn't say Scraby's it. Scraby's right. They won in 05, and they won in 09, and they also won in 2017. So three for North Carolina. Scraby leads six to five. There are two correct answers remaining. Mm. Oh, 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 I got this one. Tony needs uh, him, needs huh? one to tie, and then Scraby would be on the on the on the hook for the win. I'm but first, use... you got to get the tie. Yeah, no, I'm gonna get the tie. I'm uh, gonna get the tie. The, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the most obvious one so I can try to trap Mr. Scraby. I'm gonna say the Florida Gators went back. To back. Mm. Yeah, surprised you guys waited that long to use them. That is correct. Florida in 06 and 07. So there we are. There's no way he's getting this. We have come as far as we can. Scraby thinks he's, he's looking at me like he knows the answer. I'm just saying he's standing up because oh he's about ready to celebrate. I hope I'm right. Does he know the other team that won an NCAA championship? In this century, if he does, he will win Chris's Fantabulous Sports Game Show today. Would it have been? Oh, man, I hope this is right. I'm so nervous. You're so nervous? Would it have been Gordon Hayward's butler? Oh, my God. Is that wrong? I'm so heartbroken for him. Is that wrong? <laughs> I don't want to say so because I think you're going to throw something at me. If it's wrong, it's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. Gordon Butler's uh, Butler missed Gordon. the shot. It didn't go in. They Ooh. almost won it. I know who they played. Yeah, they played Duke and they played UConn. They lost to both of them in back-to-back -back <laughs> years. Oh. I'm so sorry, Scraby. That is incorrect. Are you guys impressed with my poll, though? I uh, am. A little bit. This was a good game. A little bit. Oh, it was a good game. Oh, Tony's already. already... <laughs> he says it's over. <laughs> Tony's calling his shot. I feel bad for you, Scray, because Tony, I mean, I know you're at the stadium. You couldn't see the look on his face. He was so sure of himself that he had this one. And he stood up. He was getting ready to dance. Please. please and I, and I feel like I, I broke his heart. Please be, well, I feel I, like I, I broke I, I his heart. Wrong. Uh, all right, that. Tony, you uh, the door is open for the final national championship of this century. Who won it? And if you're right, you win yet again. I wish I could remember the guard's name. I just remember he played for the Lakers for a little bit, and he went to the University of Maryland. The Terps. It was Steve Blake, wasn't Steve it? Steve Blake. I even know the guy from Maryland! <laughs> Gary Williams led the Terps to the championship in 2002. They beat Kansas in the Final Four. They beat Indiana in the championship. Oh. That was a heartbreaker. I'm Sorry, a little Greg. worn out, and I'm just the host of the show. I'm okay. I I, I fought valiantly this time. That was a great. That was a yeah. good one right there. I'm, you guys I think got them the first all. time we got all of them. Thirteen Maybe. for thirteen. You guys blew through it with only one strike. 
I, I'm happy about that because this was definitely an up in the air category for Matt Scrape. Let me tell you, you were really good. You were. Tony, Tony knew Maryland though because of a Steve Blake memory. Steve yep. Blake. You also got Michigan State and McTeen. Yeah, please. that was pretty good. That you came good. up with the other big poll, which I thought was Syracuse. I didn't think that was obvious. Well done. Tony Gwynn Jr. wins the Fantabulous Sports Game Show in a thriller today. Tony, when you're at the uh, at the ballpark, uh, go tell Mark <laughs> Grant so that he lie. makes sure he's got a result on this. Yeah, I'll, make, I'll make sure I let him know. <laughs> Please let him know. We'll come back. More Gwynn and Chris. I believe Chris versus the fans. Yes. I want to have believe. It's always Chris versus the fans. It's next at 833-288-0973. <laughs> Pod Rays Cubs today. Diving stop. Pull through the first, and he got him. Pre-game 605. First pitch 705. The Padres play here on 97.3. The Fan. Another happy Safe Light customer. Safe Light Repair. Safe Light Replace. There I was, driving down the highway, and a rock flies up and cracks my windshield. Are you kidding me? I asked for recommendations, and everyone sang the same thing. Safe Light Repair. Safe Light Replace. I booked an appointment at safelight.com and they came to me for free. It was that easy. Cracked windshield? Go to safelight.com now to schedule your free mobile service and let Safelight come to you. Conditions may apply. Safe light repair, safe light replace. How powerful is Cox Internet? Powerful enough to let your band members in Vegas, Phoenix, and Rhode Island jam like you're all in the same garage. Introducing multi-gig download speeds powered by fiber from Cox. It's internet built for tomorrow, today. Cox, always building better. Limited availability in select areas. Cox internet is connected to the premises by a coaxial connection. Speeds vary and are not guaranteed. Cox terms and other restrictions may apply. Almost every week, kidney specialists at Sharp Healthcare perform a transplant from a living donor. Like Caleb from North Park, who gave a kidney to a high school friend on dialysis. Sandra donated to a woman she met on TikTok. Terry, a father from Rancho Penasquitos, gave a kidney to his adult son. But still, there's a list of 615 sharp patients awaiting a kidney, surviving day by day, hoping for the life-changing call. But donating is easier than you may think. Kidneys come from friends, family, co-workers, and even from a complete stranger, like you. Adults can donate at any age, and you'll live normally, except for the privilege of forever knowing you saved a life. Learn how at sharp.com slash give life. 615 San Diegans are hoping you will. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Some people just know the best places to eat around town. Those are the people who know to choose Allstate. They know exactly where to go to get exactly what you're wanting. They know where to find the spiciest hot pot, the gooeyest brownies, and the tenderest, most flavorful portobello steak. Those people also know that safe drivers save 40% with Allstate. Saving 40% is based on the national average premium savings for Allstate Auto customers with a clean driving record versus those without. Savings vary by state and vary based on how you buy. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate.
And away we go with the 4 o'clock hour. 4.01 is the time. Welcome back to Gwen and Chris. Chris Ello, Tony Gwynn Jr., victorious again despite a, uh, a hard-fought matchup today with Matthew Scraby. You will never forget Maryland winning an NCAA basketball championship. That's all that was stood between you and today's title, Scrabe. Proud and Steve of your performance. Blake, apparently. Steve Blake was on that Maryland team. I think they had some better players than him. Uh, but he was the guy that did go on to the NBA, play with the Lakers. I don't really remember a lot else about that Maryland squad. but uh, Didn't even remember anything about that. They were Chris. champions. And uh, Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn Jr., by the way, we focus a lot on your inability to win. Let's not the give him credit. sports game let's show. You don't want to give him any credit? No, let's not. All right. Let's he's not. he's uh, you know preparing for the game tonight out at the stadium. And it's like playing the Rockies every night. You just know you're going to win. So why are we well, going to give considering him credit? You're the Rockies. I mean, how can I say I'm not the Rockies? You weren't the Rockies today. You were right there in the hunt the entire way. <laughs> yeah, but the Rockies are in the hunt. They and just always didn't, lose. Tony didn't miss a single answer. I mean, that's you know you got. I'm sorry, a little it's really credit frustrating. where it's due. Remind you to stay around. <laughs> Two hours from now, the Eco Water SoCal Padres pregame show. Sam Levitt. Comes up at uh, 6.05 tonight. The game starts a half hour later than normal at 7.05. Also, one more note. At some point, not in this segment because we're going to play uh, Chris versus the fans, but some point today, yes. I was thinking of something clever, but I didn't come <laughs> up with it. You'll have a chance to win a pair of tickets to tomorrow's Padres-Cubs game. Uh, first 40,000 fans tomorrow receive a Manny Machado bobblehead. You can get tickets at Padres.com slash tickets or keep listening to the program. Your chance to win will be coming up soon. I have one note before we get to Chris versus the fans. It's a big one for fantasy baseball players everywhere. Brian Snitker said today <gasps> that the Atlanta Braves will not yet release any information on Spencer Strider. Uh. They will, they will make an announcement this weekend. Snit, according to this tweet by Mark Bowman, who follows the Braves, Snit yesterday, said yesterday's visit with Dr. Meister, which was the second opinion, Snit said that that visit did not erase the possibility of Tommy John's surgery. The Braves might be waiting for the actual surgery to be completed before they provide an update. I'm, I mean, it doesn't matter to me, but it matters to most people, almost everybody. And in- well, it doesn't matter if I know whether or not he has surgery, but no, my point is, is there's no good news now coming from the second opinion, which no. tells me that the Braves will announce this weekend that Spencer Strider's done for the year. If I hear anything differently, I'll be shocked. So tough blow for the Braves. Tough luck for me and hundreds of other fantasy baseball owners who I'm sure picked him highly. Yeah, as you should have. He started off the year pretty good. Actually, he did not. I he thought was, he had a bunch of strikeouts. Well, maybe. I don't know. He hadn't won a game yet. He's in the first two star. Anyway, it's either here nor there. Um, a lot of people's first round pick is gone for the year. That's yeah. that's tough. Yeah. For fantasy. That is tough. And you're one of those guys. I'm one of them guys. So, uh, you know, you got, uh, we can share that agony together <laughs> as we, <laughs> I mean, and if you have an auction league, you probably paid 60 bucks for him. That's where it hurts 50, a lot 60. more. Well, hurts a lot. Cause I mean, he's, he was supposed to win the Cy Young. He was the odds on favor to easily win the Cy Young. I mean, isn't he like 180 pounds and he throws like 300 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Well, We'll see. That's nothing official yet, but speculation is running rampant. I kind of like how pitchers are, are saying, or not all pitchers, but some pitchers saying, you know, it's the sticky stuff that we don't have anymore. It's like, okay, so you need to cheat in order to be your best? Just learn how to throw. I know it's not that simple, Chris. It's not that simple. <laughs> I, I think the sticky stuff kept them from putting as much torque on their arm to try and spin the baseball. So I can see that argument. Uh, but something's wrong. Something is very, very wrong. Uh, yesterday, Framber Valdez was pulled from his start because of elbow pain. Yeah. Today, Washington Nationals opening day starter Josiah Gray goes on the injured list with right elbow pain. 
I mean, it's almost every day. Yeah, the irrational. And, sorry, it's almost every day, and it's almost always an ace pitcher. Josiah Gray is the Washington ace. Framber Valdez is the Astros ace. Spencer Strider is the ace. Garrett Cole. I mean, the list is ridiculous yeah. of guys that are hurt right now. Baseball's got to be concerned about it. If they for can't, sure. If they can't figure out what to do, they better think of something because they're losing everyone. The irrational part of me gets a little bit angry when I hear this news. The irrational part of me. Because it's like everybody needs to be paid the most, but you get hurt. I, I don't like it that owners have no recourse over someone getting injured for the entire year. Oh, that's not what makes me mad. What makes me mad is what Russell Dorsey said yesterday on our show, and that is that they start pushing these kids when they are 12 years old, 14 years old, 15 True. years old. True. I'm going to sound like old man again. No, I think you're right, though. But they start pushing these kids when they're 14, 15. You've got to throw 95 or you won't even get a look at the major leagues. And that's Major League Baseball's problem right there. You've got to throw 95 or you won't even get a chance. So these kids get pushed earlier and earlier and earlier. And when they get there, they blow out. I mean, we could bring Randy Jones on and talk about this, but I already know what Randy's going to say because Randy didn't have to throw 95 to get people out. I still believe you could get some guys out by throwing in the 80s, but they don't believe that in Major League Baseball. So the it's arm injuries are going to continue. Yeah, I hope not, but it uh, will. It will. I, unless something changes, they're going to have to make a change somewhere to uh, stop this from continuing. All right. Sorry. Chris versus the fans. Let's go. If you had one. Now is your opportunity to win a prize. Well, I hope you know what you're in for. Chris versus the fans starts now on 97.3 The Fan. All right, qualify for a chance to win the grand prize today. Two nights stay, Westgate, Las Vegas Resort and Casino. Two tickets to see Cool and the Gang. They're backed by popular demand. Multiple sold-out shows. The legendary funk group. Cool and the Gang back on stage at Westgate, Las Vegas. Residency through 2024. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. The Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino features newly designed premier rooms, part of their $70 million room renovations, home of legendary Vegas fun. You'll qualify for that. You will win this, a pair of tickets to this Sunday's SD Legion rugby match against the NOLA Gold at Snapdragon Stadium. Grab tickets at SDLegion.com. Scraby the rules. You have to make it through three questions. Each question will get more difficult. If you get the question right, you move on. If you get it wrong and Chris gets it right, you're eliminated. But if Chris gets it wrong, then you move on to the next question or you win. If you're a first-time player, let us know before you get into the first question. You get it for free today. All right. Let's go to the phones and find our first contestant. Let's go with Mario. Okay. Hello, Mario. Mario. Third time caller, man. Uh, third time's a try. Let's go, fellas. Let's do this. I like Mario's uh, positivity Enthusiasm. here. Enthusiasm. I love it. Here we go, Mario. Question number one. What is the Reds logo on their hat? It's a C. It's a C. <laughs> Mario was like, what is he asking? It's, it's so not easy. Mr. Red or whatever it's called. No, Mr. Red's yeah. not on the hat. Yeah. All right. Here we go, Mario. Question I think number. That is the name of that uh, Mr. Red? mascot. Mr. Yeah. Red. Yeah. Why, with, with the big ball head. He's a big baseball. Yeah. Like the, the Mets have the same. Yeah. But the Reds were here much. Yes. He... What's the Mets head guy? Oh, name? He's got um... a name too. Mr. Met. I think. I think it so, is Mr. Matt. Yeah, I think it's Mr. Matt. All right. Anyway, Mario. If we're going to, we're, if we're going to stop down and talk <laughs> mascots, blooper from the Braves is still the best. When he stole Manny's money. That was great. All You're right. a blooper fan. Yes, I'm a huge blooper fan. I don't think anybody's ever beaten out the chicken right here in San Diego. He's still number one in my book. But the book. chicken, like, I can I can be okay with the chicken being on a Mount Rushmore, but the chicken isn't around anymore. I know, but I don't think anybody's beat <laughs> okay. him. All right, I'm sorry, Mario, you had to listen to that. I but know, he's, he wants to play ball. Here we go, question <laughs> number two. All right, 
Let's see here. What now Twins player won Rookie of the Year in 2015? Oh boy. Not easy. Oh, the shortstop, man. I can't think of his name. You got this, Mario. I know it. <laughs> uh oh. I don't think. I'm sorry. I don't think Mario knows. Here's the thing that's really bad for Mario. I would not have come up with this had he not said the shortstop. Really? Yeah. It's a little. I mean, I'll say Carlos Correa. I don't even know if it's right. Don't take my shirt off. Nah, it is right. Sorry. Sorry, sorry Mario. Mario. Yeah, Call back, a, Mario, please. You know, it happens often. Because the enthusiasm of the caller, and you're trying to come up with the answer, but a little trick of the trade. If you don't know the answer, you're better off saying nothing. Yeah. Because a lot of times that your clue gives leads me Tips to the answer. Chris off, yes. It does happen that way. So just something to keep in mind. All right, let's go to Eric. Um, yeah, Eric. Why Hi, Eric. I, I, Brand hey, blank. Jens, how we doing? We're good, very Eric. good, Eric. Very I know good, Eric is a, a good player. He has yep. won before. I got to I gotta try to play the Scraby game, too. I'm trying to play against Chris, but I got to I gotta play Scraby, too. So. <laughs> I'm trying to figure <laughs> out Scraby's questions are half the battle. I think my questions are pretty good yeah. today. So. Uh, we'll see All right. about that. Here we go. Question number one to Eric. What was Frank Thomas's nickname? The Big Hurt. Boom. That was quick. big old hurt. That was like re reflex. That's a good nickname. I don't know who gave it to him. I think Ken Harrelson, their broadcaster, did, but I could be wrong. I, I will never forget the day Chris and I walked into the hotel in Cooperstown and Frank Thomas is checking into the hotel and Johnny Bench and I think Lance Berkman were walking down the hallway in their uniforms. It was like a dream. I'm not kidding. Something was wrong with that picture. We, if, if I recall Frank Thomas, he was checking in and the lady was like, excuse me, can I see some ID, please? I need to you yeah, know, oh, get all yes, the information. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, Frank uh, Frank was, he might as well have just been any Joe Blow yeah. from anywhere. Yeah. And I'm thinking the lady works at the hotel in Cooperstown. Where she everybody have stays. ID. She had to have an idea. And... She's talking to a guy who's like six foot five, yeah, 280 pounds imposing. of muscle. Yeah. But yeah, that was one of the craziest experiences of yeah, my life. Yeah, Johnny Bench walking around in his uniform with Lance Berkman. <laughs> and Frank Thomas checking into a hotel. Yeah, just just another day, day in Cooperstown, crazy apparently. Day. All right, Eric, here we go. Question number two What was the name that John Heyman tweeted out when he meant to tweet Aaron Judge? went to the Giants. Remember this? This happened last year. What was the name that John Heyman tweeted out when he meant to tweet Aaron Judge's name? Oh, no. I've said this far too many times. You have. God. Oh, that means Chris knows. Not going to say anything. I can't come up with it. Not All right. That's a good strategy. But I think Chris knows. He doesn't. Oh, really? Remember. Oh, you were waiting. I know, but I don't remember. Was it? Oh, you've said it so many times. Was it Air Judge? Air Judge. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Eric moves on. It was Arson. Arson Judge. Judge. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, very good. Not only, I'm sorry, John. No, Amy. I couldn't remember. Not only did you tweet out that he was. Trey or he was signing with the Giants. He also tweeted, tweeted his, his name, name out. Wrong. Well, he got an instead of an R, he got an S. That's yes, all. he did. All right. I think he should have tied the error judge would have been funny. That would have been funnier. All right, good for you, Eric. All right. You can uh take the title here. Here is question number three. Here we go. For all the moolah. There are two active players right now in baseball at the top of the hit list. One has 2,135 hits. The other has 2,130 hits. Name both. Wait, what is this now? Basically, active players who are atop the hit list. Got it. Oh, man. Um, I got to name both of them? Yes. It's a question number three. Uh -huh. This is a lot harder than the Cal Ripken Jr. I got my first time. <laughs> um, oh, my God. I'm trying to think who's been around. Jeez, please. Pool Holes isn't, in, isn't around anymore. Um, I don't think Cabrera's. I think he's technically retired. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to. Wow. Are you going to answer? Yeah, you got to. You okay. got to. I can't even get there. Oh, wow. Eric, Eric, I love how Eric says buzz me. 
It's like man of the rules. Chris? Active hit leader. Active hit leaders right now. There's two of them. One has 2,135. The other has 2,130. Haven't the foggiest well, idea? Dan says Eric Hosmer on the list. Eric Hosmer. <laughs> he's Did not you say a, active? Yeah, well... Don't recall him being active. I think he's I'm about a thousand hits short too. I'm gonna think. Of, I'm gonna think of a guy that's been around a long time. Okay, won a lot of hits. I think Andrew McCutcheon. Okay, and I'm gonna say <laughs> Altuve. Altuve. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, Eric's you have one. Stay right there. Good job, Eric. Who won? Who is it? Did uh, I even come close? Uh, you, you, McCutcheon's definitely on the list. Okay, he's got over two thousand hits. Freddie right. Freeman has two thousand one hundred and thirty. Oh, he's one of the answer. Freddie Freeman and Joey Votto, two thousand one hundred thirty-five hits. And where is he active? Toronto. Is he on the team? I believe he was with the Blue Jays. Didn't he sign with the Blue Jays? I know he signed with them. I don't know that he made the team. Well, I mean, I'd he's still to, active, right? He's not retired. Tech, I'm gonna have to call this on okay. a technicality. Eric. I'm I going to look right cal- now. <laughs> I need a he hasn't played a game this year. He hasn't played a game this year. But they're saying that he is uh he's currently in the minors. Oh. So I, guess I guess that's he active. Ha- well, I guess he hasn't a- well, I guess that officially he has not retired. He's still trying to play, but he's not he's not on a major league roster. But that's no. okay. I didn't get uh, Freddie Freeman either, so I don't really have much of an argument. Yeah, but he's uh, 2,135 hits. Votto and Freeman. He needs to start finding a team so that Freddie, well, Freddie Freeman's going to pass him anyway. Freddie Freeman's going to pass him. I wouldn't have got Freddie Freeman. That's He has a lot more hits than I thought. Uh, I would have, if you would have said who's got more McCutcheon or Freeman, I would have guessed McCutcheon for sure. But uh, Eric uh, is a winner. He's won before. He wins again. Stay on the line, Eric. You will go to the rugby match and you'll also qualify for a trip to Las Vegas. We will take a quick break. We will check a little traffic for you. There was something I wanted to share with you, though, when we come back. But I'm older now, and my memory <laughs> is not quite what it used to be. <laughs> no, I had, a, I had it right here. Well, you'll find it in the break. No, I'm going to tell you, it has to do with left-handed pitchers, one hurt and one in big trouble. When we return. From the 90s. <laughs> Uh, Chris Ello is the name that's important.
Baby Eric, a consistent winner on Chris versus the fans. I'll tell you one thing, not only is Eric good at the game, he ought to teach a course on how to call in and get through. It's true. Because we talk to people all the time who go, I call and I can never get through. I want to play. I can't get through. Eric seems like he does it every time. I don't, so think I don't know what he does. Time. I don't think every single I gotta time. I got to give Eric credit, man. He's got a magic phone there or something. I will give people hints on either how to that, get him. Either that or you are in cahoots with Eric. No, that would get me fired, Chris. Oh, it would. And come on, I take this way too no, seriously I know to you be would. in cahoots. I'm joking. I know in you would cahoots. know cahoots. You wouldn't know how to cahoot. I wouldn't know how to cahoot. You You're wouldn't right. know how to cahoot. Here's, the, here's, here's, here's a little bit of a, a, a trick. And I'm giving it to everyone. What's the trick? There's a trick? You got to wait through the game, see how people are doing, call in late, and hope you get tiebreaker, tiebreaker, and that is your qualification right there. Got you. Uh, you got don't like that? It's all right. like that tip? I don't know. I just, I, I don't understand. I know there's people that want to play the game that have never gotten through, and then I know people like Eric have gotten through like well, seven, eight times. Why are you blaming Eric? I'm not. Okay. I don't know how he does it. He, he, I he don't think he does that's anything why I go back. different. So I go back. You got to teach some sort of course on it. <laughs> like when I was younger, uh, we're always, if we're I younger. Well, turn. have you ever called the radio station to try and win tickets, Never. you know, to a movie or, you know, whatever it is? Never. I have, I've done it maybe seven times. I've never gotten anything but a busy signal. And then there's prize pigs out there. There's people yes, out there that are called that prize the name, pigs. Yes. They spend their entire day sitting by the phone, yes. listening to other stations, this is true. trying to win prizes. This is true. And they win them consistently. And, and then it, there's it's other illegal people for never... us to turn them away once they've That's been right. selected Even though as the we winner. know they're prize pigs. I love... I'm not saying you are, Eric. Please don't no, take that no, the wrong no, way. No, no, no. I'm trying to just explain that I don't understand how some people get through. Some people never get through. Prize pigs, the definition of a prize pig is someone who their job is to win prizes on the radio. I know. That's what their job is. All right. Here's what I want right now. I really want to give two tickets away to the Padre Cub game tomorrow. <gasps> I. It's always random. Scraby will select... But I hope it's somebody that's never got through who gets through and wins them. <laughs> I have the phones locked. Like it will really upset me if it's somebody who always gets through and wins these tickets. I hope it's somebody brand new who gets through and wins the tickets. The phone number is 833-288-0973. Don't start calling yet. I haven't even given the question. Well, the phones are locked anyway. All right. So you're not going to get through yet anyway. All right. You got to answer this question. If you answer it, or I guess if you're the first to look it up on Google, either way, it's that's totally fair. It's totally fair because what am I going to do? Tell you you can't do it. You get two tickets to see tomorrow's Padres Cubs game at Petco Park. You're on your way. The first forty thousand and you will receive a Manny Machado bobblehead doll. Can you call them dolls anymore? Or is it just bobblehead? I think it's just Bob. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, get tickets at Padres.com slash tickets. Here's your question. Because of a poem that was written <laughs> in the early 1900s, you're wondering where I'm going with this. Oh, my this. gosh. Because of a poem that was written. I'm trying to make these questions hard. In the early 1900s, <laughs> the double play combination of Tinkers to Evers to Chance. I'm sorry? You've tinkers never heard of Evers Tinkers to, to Evers to I've Chance. I've never heard that. All right. Well, you're not old enough to have heard of it. But <laughs> Tinkers to Evers to Chance became the most famous double play combination in the history of baseball. Um, they're in the Hall of Fame. The poem is in the Hall of Fame. It's part of baseball lore. It's tinkers to Evers to Chance. Okay. Today's question Tinkers was the shortstop. Evers was the second baseman. Chance was the first baseman. Who played third base mm. on the Cub infield that featured the famous Tinkers to Evers to Chance poem? What year is this again? I don't know. I got to believe that nobody knows this answer out there, but somebody's going to look it up and find out. Call in at 833-288-0973. If you get it, you're going to tomorrow's Padres-Cubs game. Let the dialing begin.
Ashley called in with the correct answer. Tinkers to Evers to Chance, the famous poem about the Chicago Cubs double play duo of 1910. Third baseman's name was Harry Steinfeld. It's a classic baseball trivia question. Ashley had it. She's going to see the Cubs tomorrow. Yes. Play the Padres at Petco Park. Way to go, Ashley. Thanks for dialing in and listening to the program. And I did my best job of shuffling the lines for for Chris. You did everything you could do. Yeah. And uh, Ashley, I think, is a new caller. So yeah. it's good yeah. to have somebody new Yes, get through and win. Nothing against you regular callers. Correct. But it just amazes me when the same people somehow are able to get through. It's not supposedly that easy. People are like... Oh man, Chris! Chris doesn't like Eric. I'm no, like, that's no, not true. No, that's not true. Not true Don't say that because it's not true. No, not true at all. Uh, just trying to figure out how he gets through and everybody else doesn't. That's why uh, I says he ought to teach a class. Our uh, inboxes are full of people who would like to know how to get on the show. This is why we're talking about it. Uh, let's get to some traffic because uh, we got to go big five right now. Right now. 73 The Fan Traffic Center. Here's Kelly Tavik. Traffic is sponsored by Valvoline Instant Drive Through Oil Change, a 15 minute instant drive through oil change. A couple of brush fires this afternoon. One of them has just been extinguished on westbound 52 Mast Boulevard. That right lane is closed for cleanup. And you're also going to find some one-way traffic control out on Hamishaw between Sweetwater Springs and the 94 are all due to a brush fire. So expect some delays both directions there along Hamishaw. Also traveling on the southbound 120. It's that time of the show when we check on the latest in sports. Only the most important topics and questions are brought to light. Stop what you're doing and listen. These news stories will astound and amaze you. The one, the only. Oh my God, who the hell cares? The Big Five starts now on 97.3 The Fan. Well, if there was ever a time to be at Petco Park this season, it was last night. I don't think I'm ever going to come down off of this Fernando Tatis Jr. home run high that I'm on right now. Until they lose a, two games in a row. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but right now, I am riding this high, Chris. This is, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. This is what I got left. Okay. All right. Number five. And it has uh, really revitalized and reinvigorated everyone. Here I was we go. waiting for it. I was waiting for it. No, I knew that was over the top. But who do you think was the biggest believer in this comeback? Manager Mike Schilt. Fernando, after the game, said this about what the skipper said to the team down 8 nothing. He was thinking about removing starters from the game, and then Schilt told Fernando, quote, let's see how the next two innings go, and we go from there. We felt like we were going to come back, but if we didn't in a couple innings, it would be time to think about tomorrow, end quote. Tony, when this is a completely opposite direction, when do you wave the white flag in a regular season game? Uh, it, it's a feel thing. It's a feel thing. It's a, um, a a case by case deal. Sometimes you don't remove them. You know, um, the thing about the Padres last night is, is although they were getting their butts whooped, they were still putting good at bats together. It wasn't like there was first pitch hacking and roll over sit. I mean, there are some still some battle at bats throughout that process. That's something Toddy talked about after the game. And I think those are kind of the signs that you're looking for. And then all of a sudden you click a two run shot, a you know, a few more hits that lead to runs. I mean, they had some help uh that that kind of uh sparked it. And so I you know I don't know that there's a specific time that you wave the white flag. I think it's just kind of by feel of how the game is going and what you're seeing from uh, the guys in the lineup, uh, it's you know I think Schilte played it right. Let's let's see to see how these go to next couple innings. See what kind of at bats we put together, and then uh, that that must have been what the fourth inning because it, 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 was, it, it couldn't have been that long. I mean, the sixth inning is where they put up all those runs, so uh, it was right on time. Uh, Chris, when do you wave the white flag in a regular season game? All the things that Tony said, plus I think one more thing, and that is who is the starting pitcher on the other side. Uh, I don't, I don't want to pick on a kid from Tijuana who's young and making his way through the big leagues, but I always feel I might have a chance against Javier Assad as opposed to if I'm facing Clayton Kershaw or Justin Verlander and I'm down 8 nothing in the sixth inning. 
So I, I think that was part of it. But, you know, I think he was going to wait till six innings, seventh inning stretch, something like that. If it was still 8 nothing. probably would have rested some guys for today's game. But, you know, they came up with that big rally, as Tony said, just in the nick of time. And, you know, the funny thing is, I think every team that gets down 8 nothing, at least for a brief moment, feels like, you know, we can come back. It's only the fourth inning. But to believe in it and to follow it through and to actually get all the way there and climb over the mountain, yeah, that's nice. And that, that should help uh, this team going forward quite a bit. Real, real quick, a couple of things. The iron, the first part is the irony in Chris's answer is the first time this happened was against Mac, Mac Scherzer. Yeah, Mac that's Scherzer. true. Oh, that's yeah. true. To Padre. Yeah. The second part is these comebacks happen in, in one of two ways, especially when you get eight runs in the first three innings, right? It's our first four innings. It's – Either you're chip away, like you you just kind of getting them two runs here, a run there, and it's like throughout the rest of the game, or you have a big inning like they did in the six, where you take a chunk, if not all of it, away, um, and then there's some life again. Uh, either way, it, it's those type of moments that start to make a team believe. Padres are, uh, you know, one thing if not, you know, uh, consistent offensively. But when they have a big inning, they have one, yes. right? Aren't they leading Major League Baseball in four-run innings this year? Oh, I think I'm they, not sure. Yeah, I think they are. I think they've had eight four-plus run <laughs> innings this year. And we know going into the game last night, they had not scored a lot of crooked uh, number innings. You so, wanted a crooked inning, you got a crooked that's inning. That's right, yeah. All right. Number four. Uh, bear with me on this one, guys. I was reading some things about Shohei Otani this morning, and I find something very interesting about the Dodgers and their getting-to-know-him process. They basically know nothing about him. They didn't even know he was getting married before spring training. They didn't even know his practice routines or what he likes and what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. The Dodgers also didn't know his interpreter was going to cause a bunch of illegal gambling issues within the clubhouse. That was just the shot. Chris... Do you think Shohei Otani is just a little too private? I have no idea, but I know the Dodgers knew one thing about Shohei Otani. Uh, and it was the most important thing that they knew about Shohei Otani. And that is that he likes money. <laughs> and so they, they had a whole bunch of it and they sent it in his direction. And guess what? He said, OK, um, you know, I mean, that's what it was going to come down to. I mean, you're bringing up things that are interesting. But let's say the Dodgers knew he was going to get married. Let's say the Dodgers knew what his favorite breakfast cereal was. It, it wasn't going to matter. I mean, they were going to sign this guy oh, I get because that, they yeah. had the most money to sign him. So I, I don't know. He's probably, you know, maybe he's private in, in just in general. But I think, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the language barrier, yeah. the language gap yeah, yeah. causes a bigger barrier and gap between him and – the Good rest point. of baseball. Good point. So, you know, it's interesting. You, who was it we were talking about the other day that spent a whole bunch of time during the offseason learning the language? De La, De La, De La yeah, Ellie De, Ellie De La Cruz. He didn't want to feel like there was such a big gap. You know, I'm not saying Otani needs to learn English, but, you know, I think that would help. Yeah. You know, shore things up and, and close the gap quite a bit. But until then... I mean, there's going to be this disconnect, and I, I don't think the Dodgers mind it all that much. I think you mind it for some reason more, way more than they do. Well, I mean, just because a Dodgers fan took a shot at Tatis on my profile saying, "Oh, he needed steroids to hit that one out," it's like, what? What do you do it? So then I got mad at Shohei Otani, and then I wrote this question. Okay, sorry, Tony. I'm, I'm so we have that that idiot. One person who probably has three to thank for this question. <laughs> yeah, I know you. You were no, I no, I I was on ESPN.com and I saw this because they were talking about how he is trying to acclimate himself better, and then they brought up all these points of them not knowing about these certain okay. things. So that's why I came. Well, the one thing that we know about you, oh, and gosh. this is not an overreaction, oh, gosh. is that you are an overreactor. <laughs> that we know for sure. I don't think there's any argument about that. You overreact about pretty much everything. Did I just start this segment saying I'm going to be high on Fernando's home run forever? Yes, For the rest of time, I yes, believe I it did. is. Yes. <laughs> uh, Tony, I'm a little afraid to ask you about this, but do you think Shohei Otani is just a little too private? No. I knew, no. I mean, I knew that was the answer. I mean, here's the deal. Like, If I recall correctly, Chris, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't recall Ichiro like 
ever. I mean, I think it was known around the league that he knew good English, but I don't recall him, you know, doing a ton of interviews. He used, or, he used it when it was beneficial to him, and he used the fact that he supposedly didn't know English when that was beneficial to him. <laughs> which is smart. That's what he did. I think that this is kind of, you know, you know, the language barrier is a thing. Whether it's they're uncomfortable speaking publicly in English or not, uh, the language barrier is something. Uh, in terms of his privacy, there are a lot of guys who are who are like that. The only difference is they're not Shohei Otani, who was like the biggest star in the game. So some would argue that when you take on that kind of uh, mantle, if you if you you know when you take that kind of you know title uh, status, yeah, that there's a responsibility that comes with it, and you know. I, I think it's each his own, honestly. You know, he 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 kept his he clearly kept his uh, relationship with his wife private. Uh, I can't say that I blame him. Just you know how people kind of you know use that stuff against you at times. Um, but no, I don't think he's too private. I think this in, in terms of the Dodgers, not know why would they know? They didn't have Otani in their organization for however many years, like the Angels did. They could have done all the research they wanted. Until they are like in the middle of a season to see how all these pieces and all these things work, um, they wouldn't know. So I, I doubt that they didn't have some inkling on, on terms of his kind of how he kind of rolls. I think they probably knew that. They just didn't know what it was going to look like during the season. I would guess. I think people like you that are addicted oh, to social like media, you. Scraby, are part- I'm not addicted to social media. Will you? <laughs> you kind of are. Some of the people are. like you that are addicted to social media. I'll say it again. Uh, are the reason that you have to close ranks from time to time if you're a professional athlete, because every time you do give a little piece of information, it blows up all over yep. the place. I 100 percent believe in privacy for celebrities, for everyone. But like Tony said, there are and I don't even necessarily think that anyone needed to know about his wedding. I think it's weird that his employer didn't know about his wedding or his teammates didn't know about his wedding. When you're interviewed for a job, a new job. Yes. Do, uh, do you get asked, oh, by the way, before we hire you, are you on the verge of getting married? No, but I would say <laughs> if I was getting married, hey, I'm going to have to miss some time after you hire me because I'm getting married. But I'm not going to just sit there time. and be. I know, I know, I know. That's that's not a perfect example. I think if he had to miss time, he probably would have told the team. But considering that he didn't have to miss time, he did it his way. Well, he uses a cricket bat now. So every kid in America is going to start using a cricket bat in warm ups. You guys see that? Things ain't cheap. I can promise you that. Cricket bats aren't? (laughs) I have no idea how much a cricket bat It was like the bat is a cricket. Like it's a. Wait, what? You said a cricket bat? Yeah, like the the sport cricket. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Not like a. I think they design. You know, they can design a bat. Yes, yes. Like with a cricket. That would be hilarious. Yeah, Shohei swings a bat made up of ground crickets. Um, All right, I'm moving on. <laughs> time out, time out. Not actual cricket. I guy. know, I know, I know. I'm just having fun with it. Remember, I'm on Fernando's speaking, home run Speaking high. of language barriers, we seem to have one here. <laughs> yes. uh, all right, it's Masters Week. Oh, well, let me get my music, everybody. And I've always wondered this next question, everybody. What would a mere mortal shoot at Augusta National if they were to play the championship setup? Here is Masters champ Marco Mira starting off, and then you'll hear from Larry Mize about what an amateur would shoot. A 15 handicap at Augusta National, playing from where these kids play today, for sure would not even have a chance of breaking 100. That's how difficult the course is. That's how much slope there is and speed in the greens. An average player would have a very difficult time getting around Augusta National in less than 100. They'd have a hard time breaking 100. I mean, the average amateur does not play greens like that. They may play, get some contours similar to that, but the speed is, you know, pretty pretty unusual. They're pretty quick, and, even, and the contours, too. I think a 15 handicap, they would have to play really, really, really good to break 100. There you go. And then I'll pull down the music now and go back to normal. But 15 handicap, that's about what I am. Um, I would be really happy with breaking 100. Tony, what score would you be happy with? 150. 150. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. Just keep it in the buck, man. 150. I, I bet you 
if I were to play Augusta, there would be at least four or five greens where I would have at least seven putts each green. Chris, uh, what do you think? What score would make you happy? Well, I, I don't know what my score would be, but I, I would like to try to keep it under losing uh, an average of one ball per hole. Um, <laughs> it's I mean, pretty open. You can't really lose a golf ball. Oh, I could course. lose one. I can lose one on the easiest courses, so I'm sure I could <laughs> lose one there. And I think when it came to putting, I would just not try to be making my uh shot into the hole on a putt i would try to keep my putt from rolling off the green mm, i mean yeah, that's how yeah. difficult it looks to me um so i don't even know what my score would add up to be i mean 150 i don't even know if that's accurate um you know but i'm not sure what we're trying to to show here i i don't think, I think it's fun to i don't know. think that amateur you know people can hit a major league fastball i don't think amateur people can tackle an nfl running back and I don't think amateur people can make a you know a dunk shot in traffic in an NBA game or even skate on the ice uh, against professional hockey players. Awesome. So this is this is why these are you know professionals, and we should sit back and be amazed by what they do. And this is why I love golf because I can go to a golf course that Tiger Woods has played, stood in the spot that he hit the shot, and try to recreate. But you can go the same exact. You can go shot. down to your local rink and set up a net and skate up and down but the that ice. Doesn't too. mean anything. Either does, but you're I, not golfing the same way that Tiger Woods or no, any of those other guys but as do. As a golf lover. And as a golf history lover, I can go to Torrey Pines and I can go make the same putt that Tiger made to send him into Why a Why don't playoff. you say you can miss the same putt that Tiger made? I would right. make it because I've watched it <laughs> one exactly. billion times. He said he can recreate the shot. No, you can't. You can't recreate that shot. I can you try. Can only, okay, I can you try. Can just, you can hit a shot that from the same spot, but you certainly can't recreate it. I could do the fist pump. I think golfers, everything. I think somebody was, that was a very self-serving question for golfers. So they I, could, I think it's an amazing so question. They could, so they could, you know, thrust out their chest and go, yeah, oh, everybody else would be well over 100. No way. I never <laughs> took it like that for one second. I did. Man. Golfers are arrogant. Well, this is coming from the guy who already lies about his own score by playing bogey golf. So it makes sense. <laughs> I would have to play triple bogey golf at the Masters just to even keep it remotely close. Bogey golf. I love it. Number two. Let's go back to being serious because the MLB account tweeted out a rookie of the year watch for uh, MLB, obviously. American League, number one, Wyatt Langford, Evan Carter, Jackson Holiday, Colt Keith, and Colton mm -hmm. Kowser. Okay. And then National League, Jackson Churio of the Brewers, Yamamoto of the Dodgers, Imanaga of the Cubs, Jung Hu Lee of the Giants, and then Paul Skeens of the Pirates. Who's not even in the big leagues right now. Neither is Jackson Holiday. But what I'm talking about, Chris. I should... think I know where this is going. <laughs> but here's the question, because I know where you're going to answer, what your answer will be. But should Paul Skeens be on this list when he hasn't even done anything yet? Oh, I thought you were going to I know, ask but me I already know your answer. Oh, why? Well, well, okay, fine. I'll ask the, the popular question. Should Jackson Merrill be on this list? If uh, if they have any clue. And it doesn't <laughs> sound like they do. So, you know, Jackson Merrill's, you know, uh, should be on this list if only – uh, and I'm not even on the Jackson Merrill hype train. I don't think like everybody else is, you know, I still want to wait and see, you know, what he does on a consistent basis. But the fact that he is a starting center fielder playing every day should immediately put you in the running for rookie of the year. There aren't very many rookies that are an everyday starter in major league baseball. There just aren't. I mean, you mentioned Langford, uh, you know, a couple of these other guys in the American league. That's, that's the late. The list stops there. Jackson Churio, perhaps with Milwaukee. It's there's not many, so that that's him being overlooked. No, Skeens can be on the list. I mean, I think most people expect that he'll eventually get called up, and he's got hundred mile per hour stuff, and I'm sure the Pirates will give him a, an opportunity. So, I don't have a problem with that. I do have a problem with the omission of Jackson Merrill, though. I like that way you're putting it. Tony, do you have a problem with the omission of Jackson Merrill on this list? I mean, sometimes it's best to be slept on. That's like Jackson. Too. So yeah, that I don't mind it at all. I want to keep as much of the hype off his neck and back as possible. Good and point. just let him be free and just out there doing his thing. Um, he's doing a he's doing a fantastic job right now. He he is he really is. And so um, that's fine. Yeah, let him, let him, let him, let him be slept on. I like that because he's just gonna keep going here and, and 
keep popping up in, in some of the rookie league leaders. And at the end of the day, regardless of these stupid lists, um, <laughs> his numbers are going to ultimately speak for him. So, yeah, I'm fine with him, uh, him being left off the list. All right. Yeah, that's a good answer. I like that. I was all angry earlier. No, I'm not. I'm so angry. angry. You're angry. I want to know what the name of Butch Metzger is going on here. Oh, gosh. Who's Butch Metzger? His first Padre to win Rookie of the Year, oh, 1976. Wow. He a- shared it with Pat Zachary of the uh, Cincinnati Reds. Pat Zachary passed away the other day. Oh, no. I there was you go. just about to say he's got two first names, but that's right. messed up. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's a line reserved for me chris i know nfl reporter albert breer uh put out a video of matt rule the nebraska head coach talking about a visit of bill belichick to the facilities at nebraska and albert breer put this video out with the message it's a really poor reflection on nfl owners that there were seven openings this year bill belichick wanted to work and couldn't find a job so here is what matt rule said in uh during their their press conference he is so smart i've seen so much that he can make the complex so simple that it humbles you and embarrasses you i was embarrassed yesterday listening to him how smart he is how simple it was (laughs) there's something about his voice i don't know what it is um tony what is the real reason that bill belichick was not hired in your mind a good question I, I guess i don't know enough about like the background of these teams um you know it, it's i mean we knew this that he wanted to work we heard that from uh, arthur blank he, he definitely said that um why these teams decided to go another route i don't know and i believe arthur blank said he wasn't even asking for like full um control, control over oh, yeah, the team yeah, too. Yeah. so that that's really not an excuse um, I, I don't know. It, it's 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 an interesting thing, right? I mean, you would think a guy who had as much success as him um, with the many openings that were there uh, would at least, like, give it a year. But uh, they elected not to. I, I, it's hard to say what, what's going on there in, in terms of why it didn't happen. Yeah. Chris, what do you think? What was the real reason he was not hired? I have two reasons okay. for why Belichick was not hired. Pick one. Uh, one is, and as I get a little older, I feel like I see this more often, ageism. Mm, I don't think people want a coach as old as Bill Belichick, overlooking the fact that Andy Reid is getting old and he's one of the best coaches in football. But that, I don't think, is as big a reason as the other one. The other reason is insecurity among the general managers and owners of the teams that were looking for coaches. And I say this in a general sweeping comment. People that are successful, teams that are successful, organizations that are successful, but mostly people in business that are successful surround themselves with other people that are really good. Mm. People that aren't successful shy away from those types of people. Yeah. Yes, they do. And what do all of the teams that we're looking for coaches have in common? They're not very good. (laughs) They're unsuccessful. So that's my theory. I'll stick to it. I don't know how true it all is. It's a good one. But I just believe, I mean, if you you want to win and have a chance at being successful, Bill Belichick would be a no-brainer. But I think a lot of people talk themselves out of it. They don't want to be surrounded by greatness because they might get exposed themselves. Yeah, I mean, that could be what's happening in uh, Miami right now, the Marlins. Mm. Um, they, they, you know, when Chris, you hit it on the head, man. They, unsuccessful organizations, people don't like to be reminded by somebody who has had a ton of it. Even if they're not even actually saying the word, just their mere presence can uh, upset the situation. It's a great take right there. I, I would I would co-sign that. But don't sleep on ageism. <laughs> <laughs> fight for all the old people everywhere. That's yeah. right. And fight for all of us. All right, that's it for the Big Five. When we get back, we're going to get you set for this 7.05 p.m. start between the Padres and the Cubs tonight. Probably hear from Mike Schilt and some other things on 97.3 The Fan. Another happy, safe, light customer.
It's the happy hour. Welcome into Gwen and Chris. 5.04 is the time. Chris, hello. Tony Gwynn Jr. Settling in, doing his research on Ben Brown. We still haven't gotten. We still haven't got any. He hasn't got back to us yet on with any information <laughs> on Ben Brown. I'm sure Sammy Levitt will have the insight oh, on the will. Padre pregame show, which comes up at 6:05. We will hear from Sam Levitt in this hour as uh, he visits us in the wake of the Padres' thrilling 9-8 come from behind victory last night over the Chicago Cubs. Same two teams tonight, with the start time a half hour later than normal. Tomorrow they play at 3:40. An afternoon game, so we have a very short show tomorrow. But the uh, exciting thing about tomorrow is that it'll be a Scrabinator day. The host of the Scraby Chronicles, Matt Scraby, is hosting a big party in the uh, Odyssey Suite. I don't know how I'm not bringing. I, I sent an email out to everybody yesterday, and I said there will be. Be no food. There will be no drink. I set all the rules. Can you bring your own in? Oh yeah, you can oh, go okay. out and bring that in. No, yeah, you're yeah. allowing food. Yeah, you just yeah, don't, yeah. You're not. Uh, you're not providing food. No, I also would like to um, understand. This is the Scraby Chronicles. This isn't a big ticket show like Ben and Woods. Well, they have probably the budget. I don't you know, think Ben and Woods have done a sweet night. No, I know, but if they did, they would have the budget. You know, to yeah, and I'm okay. Make with omelets that. for everybody. I, I'm okay with that. You know, because they're a big ticket item on the station. I, I'm still the working Bandit my way Woods into the show. <laughs> okay. That's a big one here. I don't know if you're aware of that. I am very well aware yes, of it. Um, the, <laughs> I was, now you got me all flustered. Oh, I sent an email saying, if we want this to happen again, everybody needs to be on their best behavior. Bring it on in tomorrow. Have a good time out at the ballpark. And uh, Scraby will, uh, you know, hopefully be able to host some parties uh, throughout the year. I think it's a really good idea. I'm going to come by, support my favorite show on the station, the Scraby Chronicles. Yes, you are. And all the listeners. So I'll see you all tomorrow. I tweeted this out this morning or maybe late last night after the game. Oh, let me tell everybody. All right. Chris is tweeting more. I'm trying to tweet a little bit more. Yeah. You can follow me at Chris LOSD. Mm -hmm. um, I said someone funny once said of baseball, quote, you can describe it in two words. You never know. And, of course, the funny part of that is that it's three words. I think you've told me that joke before, and I every have. single time I've fallen for, the, yeah. for, fallen for it. And then I said the Padres win one they should have lost just one day after losing one they should have won. What I, I, read, I read this because I want to thank Jeff Goldberg out there. I want to thank Tim Flannery mm. out there. Both of them got back to me on the tweet and said it was actually a former Cardinals pitcher named Joaquin Andujar, okay, who was the uh, responsible for that line. Now Andujar was a uh, was a pretty good pitcher back in the 1980s for the Astros and then the Cardinals. He was their ace in the mid 80s. He's famous for losing his mind during Game 7 of the 1985 World Series. Now i got to look it up. Losing, I mean, complete control of his emotions out on the mound because he thought he was being squeezed by the home plate umpire. This is Game 7 of the World Series, Cardinals and Royals. Joaquin Andujar loses it, and the Royals go on to win that last game, I think, 11 or 13 to nothing to uh, take I just the saw. World Series. I just saw it was... Um... Uh, 11 nothing. 11 nothing. Yes. But Andujar lost his mind. And anyway, but he was asked to describe baseball in one word. That's the original line. And that's where he and said. And he said, You never know. So that's kind of a funny line by Joaquin Andujar. So I'm so watching give it. him the proper credit. It's a slow rolling ball. Oh, wow. That guy just went. What happened to his knee? Did he hurt his knee? Andujar? <laughs> No, uh, is it Deckinger calls Orta safe at first base? That's that was game I'm... six, oh. and then game seven. Ah. See, what happened was Deckinger, Don Deckinger was the umpire in game six of that World Series at first base. He blew the call, Okay, and the Royals survived to force a game seven. Well, so the next night, Deckinger rotated, and he was behind home plate, and the Cardinals were still mad at him from the night before. Gotcha. And when Andujar felt he was being squeezed by... Don Denkinger, the home plate umpire, he lost his cool like big time <laughs> in game seven. 
Uh, strangely enough, it's really, really hard to find him losing his mind. They don't have video of uh, I'm sure Andy they Hart. do. It's just not as easy as I thought it would have been to find it. Right. Game 7, 1985 World Series. Yeah, I'm looking for it. That's through. what you're looking for if you need to find it. Um, speaking of pitchers who... I don't want to say this guy lost his cool, but certainly lost something. And that is Julio Arias of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Oh, yes. Now I need somebody out there who's a little smarter than I am on the law. Oh, I, I'm I'm an is amateur. That you? I'm a amateur You're my law God. expert. Yes. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Perry Mason. <laughs> um, Urias is not going to be arrest. Is not going to be charged with any felony domestic violence. All right. He was, in fact, he was originally arrested in September on suspicion of felony domestic violence. Not going to be charged with any felonies, but he is. Uh, apparently being charged with five misdemeanors mm -hmm. and he's going to be arraigned on May the 2nd. The uh, charges are one count of false imprisonment, which doesn't sound, you know, too good. One count of spousal battery, one count of assault, and he gets two counts of domestic battery involving a dating relationship. So that's where that is. Isn't there May 2nd is the next step for Julio Arias, the 27-year-old left-hander, uh, ace of the Dodgers now out of baseball and probably not going to be allowed back in anytime soon. So what's the deal? Is he is this better news for him or more news for him or do we know? Uh, I well, I don't know. Uh, but thank you. Those are very uh, serious charges. I mean, they they're sound like they're pretty serious charges, yeah, but the fact that he stays out of a felony is that in any way beneficial? I I just don't don't know. I well, yes, it's definitely better than a felony because a felony means but five misdemeanors. Is it like five misdemeanors add up to one felony? <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I don't that's know. how it I works. I don't either. I think they're like a case by case basis. Yeah. Somebody who's like, you know, lawyer out there sent Scabia a tweet or text or something or uh, put it in the chat. I'm just curious what Arias's prospects are. I'm reading Alden Gonzalez's article, and it's a little difficult to follow. Major League Baseball is investigating. They're going to expect it to wait until all of the court stuff plays out. You know, it's a shame. Arias, all of these young guys, you make these – think look before you leap yeah you're risking a lot mm -hmm. and if you can't control and i you know can't say he did anything wrong he hasn't been convicted of anything but sounds like an awful lot of people saw him beating up his girlfriend yeah so if you can't com command your composure that's that's too bad that is too bad and it's just dumb like, yeah, just stupid. Uh, one other quick note from Valdez, Houston Astros, disabled list, elbow injury. And Josiah Gray, Washington Nationals, ace, disabled list or injured list, elbow injury. This is a major problem that baseball, and I don't have the answer, don't know who has it, but they better come up with something soon. Pitchers are falling fast. They are. Maria on the chat says the, they are misdemeanors, meaning he will have to take court order domestic violence classes and probably be on probation. Send the guy to anger management. Oh, Chris. Because that never works. You, that's that's dangerous for you to say because yes, there might be someone in their car right now thinking, I should go to anger management, and then they hear you, and they're like, oh. All right, just correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> You go to alcohol class or, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous. Yeah. It works only if that person wants it to work. Is that correct or no? Would you agree with me there? Uh, like if I go to AA, but I have no thought that I have a problem. Yeah, it's not going to work. Not going to work. But it can work. It can work if I'm committed to it having a chance to work. Yeah, yeah. I got to believe that anger management works pretty much the same. I would think a lot of those people are there court ordered. So yes, it might be. So they something. probably don't want to be there in general. And I am just saying, unless you walk in and say, I have an anger management issue, please help me. I don't know that it can work. So I should have said it that way. Okay. 
I didn't mean to make this. No, such you're a, right. Such a serious. No, you're thing. right because there could be somebody driving around right there, uh, out there who uh, took anger management and it changed their life for the better. I, I used hope to that have, is the case. I used to before I stopped drinking. I had some anger problems, and one of the things that had helped me was literally you have to stop yourself from from going forward with your thought. You have to literally stop yourself in your tracks. Yeah. and reset. That's all you have to do. Yeah. But I am an angry person sometimes. It's apparently easier said than done for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, trust a me. A lot of people. Trust me, Chris. Gotcha. All right, when we come back, uh, I want to hear from uh, who am I hearing from? Padres related. Mike oh, Schilt tonight? Oh, oh, oh. We who are do we have on from... some pre -C, pre I was looking sound. at Brawny odds on being an Aztec. He's plus 1,200. What's this? <clears throat> Brawny James. Oh, that's right. He's on in the transfer portal. Duquesne is the high plus 200. I don't understand why he would ever go to Duquesne. I don't get it. I don't get it. We're going to hear from Mike Schilt. That's about it for right now. What are the odds on Kareem Abdul Jabbar coming to the Aztecs? He's also I haven't in the seen that portal. one yet. Brian Dutcher, if you're out there and you want to make a young man who I consider a friend <laughs> to be very, very oh, you're happy, talking about me? I'm talking about you. Please sign up Kareem Abdul Jabbar to play with the Aztecs. I don't know if he can play defense. That would be tough. But it would sure be fun to have him in San Diego. Scraby would go nuts. By the if way, that happened. So famous all day on the chat says you have a daily anger management segment. It's called the Daily Gripe. True. <laughs> yes, you do. And that's why I get all of it off my chest and I'm good. All Release right. it into the world. Padre sound from the Ballpark. It's just set for tonight's game after traffic. From the Hey everybody, it's Scraby here for SD Fat Loss, and you may have heard me say just a few times that I've lost 40 pounds thanks to SD Fat Loss, and I didn't think I could. Truthfully, did not think I could lose any weight because I tried everything, but SD Fat Loss put me in a good place, educated me on everything, and it helped me to lose 40 pounds just in time for summer. You're not going to eat prepackaged foods, I promise you that. You don't have to. You're not going to have to calorie count either, I promise you that. And also, if you don't really like exercise, it's encouraged, but it's not required for an everyday weight loss thing. And right now, for a limited time only, if you mention my name, when you call SD Fat Loss, you get $200 off. So just say, Scraby told me to call, and you can get $200 loss thanks to SD Fat Loss. They're not only going to teach you how to eat right now, they're going to teach you how to eat right for the rest of your life. And I am following that program and I have maintained my weight and I am still 40 pounds down, which is a great feeling. So again, for a limited time only, mention that I sent you, Scraby sent you, and you can get $200 off your program. And they have a free consultation that you can schedule right now. Just call 858-665-3211 or go to sdfatloss.com.
522, Chris Ello, Matt Scraby, to get in our Odyssey Palace our Studios, Tony Gwynn Jr. at Petco Park. Padres and Cubs tonight, Sam Levitt joins us next. Then you'll hear more from him in the 6 o'clock hour with the Padre pregame show. That would be the Eco Water SoCal Padres pregame show with Sam Levitt. Follows this program. Following that program, Padres baseball. No, no, Joe. And the Padres taking on the Cubs. The Cubs. Team they beat last night. You might have heard about the game. 9-8 final. Padres rallying from 8 nothing down. Did I see that that was tied the largest comeback in franchise history? Yeah, I think it was. the. That's why Tony brought up Daniel Camarena earlier. The Daniel, Daniel Camarena. Which game. is still, every time I see that highlight, I'm like, how did that even happen? Daniel Cameron in the Grand Slam off Max Scherzer. Not even hitting a cheap seat. No. Like way a, up there. Like a, yeah, no doubter. Way up there. Yeah, I recall that. Uh, a lot of people do, for sure. That was fun. That was fun. You know, I had something before I get to Mike Schilt. Okay. This is, I, I don't have a daily gripe segment. Oh, yeah, here we go. But I got one. Okay. I thought of, the, I thought of you the other day. All right. All right. This happens almost every time I go to Costco. Okay. It's a three-pronged Costco gripe. Gripe. All right. First gripe. Costco is very maddening. Costco is a breeding ground for gripes, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yes, it is. First thing, are you one of those people that sits there in your car and waits for like 20 minutes for somebody to back out so that you can get a little spot closer to the front door? Absolutely not. Uh, depending on if you have I limitations can't stand that yeah if you if you can walk just fine what just are you doing walk waiting? another 10 yards yeah yeah but these people sit there and then you sit behind them yeah and they got their blinker on and you got to wait for this guy to back out so that this lazy bum <laughs> can take their spot <laughs> yeah oh please <laughs> lazy bum so second. that's one prong second the person in Costco who is taking a walk around the aisles, staring off into the Netherlands mm. with nowhere in particular to go. Are they on their phones? No, they're just pushing their cart and looking around up over here. Over no, just, you don't have to be a speed cart pusher, but at least have a little purpose to what you're doing in there. No one goes to Costco and doesn't know what they're getting. Some people go there because they have nothing else to do. Oh, Maria's with you on this. And so they can walk around Costco looking over here, looking over there. Meanwhile, there's nine people who have something to get that are lined up behind their big fat cart. <laughs> Please be aware of the other people. Third. Third prong. The guy in line who doesn't have his Costco card out when mm, it's going through line, Yeah, then doesn't have his or her credit card out when it's time to pay, yep. mm -hmm. or the person that is still paying by check. Okay, that doesn't, that doesn't, that, that really happens? I've seen it. I don't have time I've for seen it, it, but I've seen it. Oh, please. It's... Okay, I agree with all of your things. The check I haven't seen lately, but if you're waiting and it's like um TSA. I last time I flew, TSA, there was someone in front of me. You have about 15 or 20 minutes to pull out your ID and get your ticket ready and everything. Yeah. It's you get to the TSA you get thing. Up to the guy and he goes, "Where's your ticket?" And you go, "Oh, excuse oh, me." Oh, sorry, sorry. I got to get it out. Let like you it. have 20 minutes. What are you doing? Yeah. What have you been doing this entire time? So I yeah. understand it's like that. the comedian who says, and I read, I saw this the other night, if you're in line at KFC and you get to the front, you should be ready. Uh, they yes. have one thing, chicken. That's <laughs> it. You don't have a lot of decision making while you're in line. Figure it out. So when it's your turn. I agree with that, too. Those are three solid gripes, Chris. Those are very solid gripes. And I, people are feeling you on the... Uh, on the chat, chances Costco is stupid crazy, especially the one in La Mesa. Um, oh, there is no way that the one in La Mesa holds a candle onto its own. This is every Costco. <laughs> Prolific says um, the Costco buying food in line. 
You know what I'm talking about? When you go get like the hot dogs and the pizza, sometimes that line's really long. I don't go to that line. No. I've also heard that the gas station is a major fiasco for people. I've never really been to the Costco gas station. I am fortunate enough to be the member of my family who is responsible for getting the gas in both our cars at really? Costco. Why but Costco? You live next to a gas station. Because Costco is like 50 cents cheaper per gallon. It's a good Here, okay, bargain. Let's, let's talk about this then. Well, 50 cents per gallon in like a 10 gallon car is only $5. Yeah. 20 gallon, 20 gallon it's it's $10. $10. And if you get gas twice a month, it's $20 a month. And if you get it on two cars right, twice fine. a month, it's $40. Fine. You got me. And All if right. you do that for 12 months, it's $5,000. Not $5,000, but you got me. You got me. You got, you got me. It. Anyway, and you also, I also live with my wife. And if she can save a dollar, You'll go to Costco. I understand Simple. it. I understand 50 cents, but the people like when there's one gas station that's like three cents higher than the other, I'm not crossing the street for the three cent discount. Agree with that. Okay. Agree with that. But I also get my Costco gas before seven in the morning. That's the way to avoid. It's the only way to avoid the line. Otherwise, you got to sit in line for about a half an hour if you want to get gas at Costco. Juan says, "How about the people that are ready to pay, and then they remember that they need something else and oh, make yeah. everyone wait?" Juan, I saw one of those ladies the other day. I almost tackled her as she <laughs> ran to the back. Sorry, ma'am, you can't yeah, change your you mind. You just don't get it. Yeah, you don't get it this time. You have to come back again. Those are solid grapes, Chris. Fair enough. Solid. All right. I didn't get to hear from Mike Schilt, but what did he say? Oh, Do here he is. Uh, yeah, well, let's 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 listen to him real quick. It's a minute clip talking about why they brought up Brett Sullivan and why they sent down Grand Polly. Call Brett Sullivan. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we call Sully back. He's done a great job in AAA. Had a great spring for us. Um, you know, it was a conversation into the end of the camp about you know him staying or, or not being on the club. It goes down, has, you know, two five hit games um, in, in in El Paso. You know, it's also more about or equally about, you know, Graham Pauly just going and playing, you know, going to get those consistent at bats. You know, a lot of positives came out of Graham being with us. Um, you know, he proved to, not that he needed to. He, he earned his spot on the team to, to start the season. But, um, you know, just trying to figure out the balance of, of still developing here at the big leagues um, and then getting the opportunities rolled to other guys performing as well. And him just being able to go get those consistent bats, go play. He's done a lot of work to improve himself in all areas. But now it's time to, you know, he hadn't experienced AAA yet. So, um, you know, go down there, play, um, move around, get your bats, and be ready to come back and contribute. He did a great job when he was here and how he handled it. And now he's got that experience to grow from. All right, there you go. The Padres, yes, they did make that move today. Brett Sullivan called up and Graham Polly sent down. I, I, I think the one thing that wasn't said there was that Brett Sullivan's a third catcher. Mm -hmm. That means that when Higashioka catches, Camposano can now DH, and you would still have a backup That's catcher huge. available. That's huge. I think it's big, and I think it's something to look forward to when Manny goes back to third base. I think you could see you know, Camposano getting some DH time there. And uh, in that regard, Manny was throwing some uh, ground, taking some grounders at third, throwing to first today. Yeah. But he's still at least three weeks away, if not more. I said end of April. Yeah, soft well, soft three, target of the yeah, that is three weeks. Three away. weeks so. I I said this on Friday about Grand Pauly, and it's nothing against Grand Pauly, but the Padres just can't afford to have someone who is not ready for the major league hitting level. Like he, I don't know about that. I just don't think you can afford to have four third baseman on the team. No, I what mean, I'm they, saying is Grant Pauly wasn't producing at all. In, 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 he hit a home run. <laughs> he, he did. He did. You're right. No, he did. Don't say he didn't do anything. He hit a home run. I, I just don't think any team, I, I think a team's kind of hamstrung with four third basemen. You got Manny, you got Wade, you got Rosario, and you had Pauly. It's a lot of guys for one position. It is. Spread it around a little bit. It is. Sammy Levitt. Got Gatorade tossed on him last night. That's how excited everybody was about that Padre come from behind victory. We'll revisit and relive it all when we come back.
All right, 538 is the time. Welcome back to Gwen and Chris. Coming up, our visit with Sam Levitt, reliving last night's classic Padre comeback and 9-8 victory over the Chicago Cubs. Speaking of classic, Scraby, today, the UEFA Champions League produced two classic matches. Soccer fans are beside themselves out there. I'm going to sit back and let you talk about hole. these two matches today in the UEFA Champions League. Now, uh, one thing I will say, the UEFA Champions League is pretty awesome. Imagine if there were a Major League Baseball level in Europe and in South Africa and in South America, and then every year like the top four teams from all of those leagues played each other. That would be pretty pretty bueno. That's cool, yeah. So that's what happens in the Champions League. You get the top teams from the Premier League against the top teams in La Liga, against the top teams in Germany, top teams in the Serie A. You know, all of them play for the, you know, thing. I think that's pretty impre- pretty cool. That is cool. So today is the first – and the other thing I like about Champions League – is it's two games. One game's played in one guy's home park. Okay. Or home stadium. Pitch, pitch. Whatever you want to, you know, yeah. I don't want to I don't want to get the soccer fans mad at me. I'm giving soccer some love right now. One is played in one guy's pitch, and the other one's played the next week in the other. Okay. And then they take the re- results of the two games, and whoever scores the most wins. And then there's all kinds of tiebreakers that are kind of intricate seems pretty fair to me and basically every time a goal is scored you know it's mardi gras and everything changes so today though they had two first leg matches in the quarterfinals of the champions league one was between arsenal oh yeah I know all-time them. great mm-hmm. from the premier league bayern munich which is like you know the big thing in, in german league yeah they played to a 2-2 draw All right, so they will go now to Bayern for the second game next week to determine who goes to the semifinals. But the other quarterfinal match today was between the last two UEFA Champion League champions. One is Real Madrid. The other is Manchester City. And they were in Spain today, and they played a match that is being called one of the great matches in soccer history. Back and forth. one nothing, Real Madrid. 2-1, to one, Manchester City. Late second half, Real Madrid ties it. Then scores to take a 3-2 lead. And then Manchester City with about 10 minutes left. They tie it back. 3-3 three, three, draw. I mean, people... Are, are you kidding me? No, I've never seen anything quite like that, Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> No, anyway. that wasn't Donovan Mitchell. That was Wimbledon, but this is Donovan Mitchell. Um, yeah, Donovan's. I just kind of lost. Up. I did. Yeah, don't. Oh. I've never seen anyone ever do that. There you go. Uh, so they go three three. Arsenal, Bayern two two. You soccer fans, if you saw some of that today, lucky you, because apparently this was as exciting as soccer gets. And uh, tomorrow, it'll be the other two quarterfinals. Atletico Madrid will take on Borussia Dortmund. And Paris Saint-Germain will take on my guys. Your guys. I went to see them play at their home did. stadium. FC Barcelona. There. Wow. Chris is like a soccer guy now. Giving you your soccer update. I wish we had relegation here. That would be cool. Wouldn't that be nice to just send the Rockies to the minor the Rockies leagues? Rockies and the A's are out of here. You know, the A's wouldn't even make the triple A. They'd go to the double A. The Rockies might make triple A. I'll take a. the Louisiana baby cakes up. <laughs> Bring them up. No kidding, man. Bring the Fort Wayne tin caps there up. There we go. Let them play Major League Baseball. The El Paso and, Chihuahuas. Until the A's get with it. I mean, really. The A's have actually won some games this year Tough so far. One. But, you know, I mean, when you're the Rock, I, I saw something the other day. The Rockies have not been above the top 26 in payroll. In nine years. Wow. Like, that's, a that's long just time. not even trying. No, not at all. What a shame that is to the, you know, people that are fans of that team. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're all Padre fans, especially after what they did last night. Traffic first, and then we relive last night's heroics with Sammy Levitt. 
From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Let's start with the good news first. That brush fire has cleared in Spring Valley, so no more one-way traffic control on Hamishaw Boulevard between Sweetwater Springs and the 94. Might still see a little residual slowing in the area. Meanwhile, what's going on with all these crashes? H Street on up to south on 125 collision, also east on 905 past Siempra Viva collision, not showing if lanes are blocked. Going to find south on 805 just past Murray Ridge crash involving a motorcycle. That's in the center divide. And south 5 coastline just past Cannon. Got a collision blocking the HOV lane. I'm Kelly Danik with Gwen and Chris, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Joining us on Gwen and Chris is none other than Sam the Great Levitt. Sam, how are you, man? Are you dry up, man? You look like you got a nice <laughs> dose of Gatorade last night. I did. The jacket got wet. The pants got wet. <laughs> my hair was dripping. Uh, yes, but I did dry off. I, it, it's funny. It looked on the video and like in real time, like it was somewhat bluish Gatorade, but it was pretty light. And I got to tell you, on my pants, which were, you know, khaki colored pants, <laughs> I had no stains on them. Um, probably have to get the jacket dry clean, but I got fortunate. That was one of my older jackets last night. But yes, the uh, a first for me in my, my baseball career, a Gatorade bath. And I, I didn't take the brunt of it. Fernando definitely did. But I, I got part of it. So uh, I do feel like I was uh, initiated into the uh, the Gatorade cooler bath a club. Are you going to uh, are you gonna send a bill to uh, Manny Machado, whoever it was who tossed the Gatorade, that uh, for, is going to force you to have a bill <laughs> at the dry cleaner? Or are you just going just gonna to eat this one yourself? Well, there's no doubt that the guys that were involved, Manny and Fernando, could afford it. But, yes, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking Odyssey and Adam Klug. Maybe they'll cover that. You yeah. go. Uh, now yes, you please thinking. charge that. Yeah, please take it out of my salary, Sam. <laughs> Make sure you take it out of my salary. That's good. Uh, I, I would say, uh, I don't know, man. You know, that might be tough. That might be tough to get that back at that point. Uh, I, I will ask you about being in the building last night because. Yeah. Uh, this ball club was down eight nothing, um, and, and Chris kind of brought this up when the Padres scored the seven in the sixth. Uh, it was as loud of uh, of it was as loud in this building as you know I, I've heard in, in quite some time. What was your take being in the building and, and kind of seeing the, the comeback come together the way it did? Well, I thought the building was actually pretty loud on the Cronenworth home run, and and mm. I think that's a credit to to the fans here in general. And I'm and I don't just say this to say it, and because we've got an audience full of Padres fans, I I always feel like the crowd's into it, no matter really what the score is. When something good happens for the Padres, uh, the fans here generally respond to it, and I thought it was that way last night after the Cronenworth home run. And then it sort of built from there. I thought, obviously, the momentum offensively the Padres had, but also in the stands by what you heard from the crowd. You could really feel it on the Kim two-run triple it, it, in the blink of an eye. Uh, it went from 8 nothing to 8-4, and, and you could feel, whether it was on the field or, or in the stands, I, I thought you could feel the momentum starting to shift. And then once, once Bogarts hit the home run, really became kind of okay they've got a real shot to, to win this game and to be honest with you once Bogarts hit the home run I, I kind of felt like they had to win the game because uh, you know had they lost at 8-7 or tied it at 8 and ultimately lost or you know taken the lead and ultimately lost uh, you know I, I, I think you could have made the argument you might as well have just lost 8 nothing, 8-1 to 8-2 to two and, and saved kind of the, the heartache but, um, you know, good for them. They showed a ton of fight. It's exactly what you want to see uh, night in, night out, as cliche as that sounds. They, they showed exactly what you wanted last night, and, and it came from the big guys, right? It came from the guys that you want to carry this offense for the most part. So a big credit to them, no doubt. Uh, you can uh, relive it uh, on the tonight's uh, pregame show. Sam Levitt hosted following our program at 6.05 tonight, and then the Padres and Cubs game two of the series at 7.05. I, I think you hit on that, Sam. When they got to within 8-7, it felt like they had to win, right? you gotta, you got to finish this off. And then Fernando, of course, uh, so good at stepping into the spotlight. And, you know, as Tony mentioned earlier, he's the guy you want up there. And he always, uh, you know, plays a starring role and plays it well. But when then you got to the ninth inning and Suarez comes in, and you, you have that quick thought in your back of your mind, man, I hope he make this is a save he's really got to get 
because you don't want to come all the way back and then lose the game. And he had the two, three, four hitters right in the heart of their lineup. And yet the crowd would not let him, you know, yeah. not get the job done. It felt like he rode their wave to that save. Yeah, I loved it. 14 straight fastballs, right? I mean, he said to the middle of that lineup, come get it. And he blew it by him and, and obviously got a pop out in there as well but you know look i think one of the real bright spots of this early season no doubt has been the fact that robert suarez no has a, performed really well but b also shown you that he can give you multiple innings and he has no problem even this early in a season going and getting four or, or five outs so i think in the grand picture of of the year so far even though they're sitting at six and seven you'd like the record to be a little bit better I think the fact that Suarez, at least early, has really established himself as this team's closer and somebody who can go get you more than three outs, I think, is is really, really important in, in the short and long run. And I'll also say about the rally, I talked about the, you know, the, the big guys carrying the way, and they did. But there were so many different aspects to that rally, right? Whether you want to point to, obviously, the at-bat that Cronenworth had, something clicked for this team offensively once he had that at bat. There was a clear change. And by the way, it got Assad out of the game, who, who really they had not done anything against until that two run homer. But the fact that Pedro Avila was able to settle down and give him two scoreless innings after giving up four in the fourth. The fact that Peralta and De Los Santos were able to keep it a one run game. I mean, you know, that kind of comeback, the, the focus, the memories are always, you know, about the offense and the rally. But there are some other elements to it where, where you've got to keep that a one-run game at that time, and they did. So, um, yeah, look, Suarez, obviously a big part of it, uh, shutting the door, and, and obviously the rest of the bullpen, uh, aside from the one inning from Avila, they, they did a good job keeping it at 8 nothing, and then keeping it at 8-7. Yeah, I, I turned to Jesse at one point after Avila's inning is like, after he came out, I was like, they got to throw up zeros from this point on. And that bullpen did just that. Uh, you mentioned Jake Cronenworth, who, you know, is coming off of a, a rough year. Um, he seems to be thriving right now after yeah. the, some of the changes he's made and having Victor Rodriguez at the helm here. Um, he's swinging a bat well. And it wasn't just the homer. It was kind of the way he's gone about. He, he went about that at bat. And it wasn't just him. Profar had those kind of have had those kind of at Jackson Merrill had those kind of at bats. It seemed to be, you know, and that was discussed after the game. It seemed to be what uh, Mike Schilt kind of leaned on when he was thinking about waving a white flag. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they were able to grind out at bats like that, and you said it, Tony, whether it was Cronenworth, whether it was Profar, whether it was Merrill, the fact that they were down eight runs and Cronenworth in particular in that spot was able to yeah. grind out that kind of at bat and then ultimately have the result he did with the home run. Yeah. I mean, I, I hope it says something about this team. I mean, in the first week of the year, we talked a lot about, you know, early signs and indicators, right? That this team was different than what it was a year ago. And then we have the six game stretch before last night where, the offense isn't doing really much and they can't score then a few runs in a game. And you've got some of the memories and the feelings and some of the things and problems we saw last year sort of creeping back in. But, you know, I, I talked on Sunday after the game in San Francisco about that game being one you could pull right from the 2023 book, put it on the table and say, yep, that, that's, that's one of those games from 2023 in San Francisco, right? And Sunday felt that way. Last night did not feel like 2023. That, that was like the kind of right there. Right. That was the kind of grinding out at bats, no matter the score, stringing hits together, moving the line, creating some momentum, and then ultimately coming up with the big swings and big moments when you need them. I mean, how about Fernando? I mean, I, I know I'm stating the obvious here, but to get knocked down on the first pitch and then the second pitch to hit one out. I mean, that is, I mean, I wasn't here for it, but that sounds to me kind of like 2021 Fernando Tatis Jr., right? The flair for the dramatic, the, the feel for the moment, the big swing, everything he did uh, but before the injuries. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, I think you hope in the long run it says something about this group, and I thought no doubt last night that felt uniquely 
2024, you hope, and, and not very much like 2023. And you hope you have more nights like those. So to their credit, you hope it's something now they can build on. I don't know. You can talk all you want about that game last night, but I think it all comes down to Spike Lee. And I think <laughs> it's got to be the shoes. It's got to be Mars, the shoes, Mars money. Blackman. Mars Blackman. Yeah, not Spike Lee. Spike Lee as Mars Blackman. It's got to be the shoes. Fernando is nothing if not an entertainer, Sammy. And mm-hmm. I, I think that you know, this is one of the real pleasures that we're getting from watching this guy play on a daily basis. He lives for running out there to right field before the game and right. stirring up the crowd. He loves, you know, giving them a little extra flair with the shoes and a little extra flair with the dramatic. And by the way, Scraby said he timed it and he ran around the bases in exactly 19 seconds. Whether he did that on purpose or not, it's still another tribute to Tony Gwynn. Um, you know, just talk about covering this guy and just being around him. Yeah. You you get to do something that not very many of us do, and that's you know, interview him. We, you know, we've been we've been begging for a Fernando interview if any Padre people are listening <laughs> for a while now, and we haven't had him on this show that I can recall in a while. Yeah. So I mean, you get to talk to him all the time, I and mean, he's so fun, and he, he's such an amazing presence. Yeah, I, I think there are a few things that stand about, uh, stand out about Fernando when when you hear from him every day and you get the chance to, to talk to him. Number one, I think he's somebody who really understands his responsibility as a key player, as a star in the game and for his team. I mean, I don't think it's talked about enough. Throughout last season, I mean, he, he was up there in front of the media most nights talking, right, and and, you know, accountable and... I just find him to really understand, um, you know, what what he means to this team, what he means to this city, how important he is, the responsibility he has between the player he is, the contract. I, I just I, I, the, the vibe I've always had is that he really gets it and he and he understands what that responsibility is. And he's somebody who who obviously plays with joy and energy and he's super fun to watch and it's part of why he's so electric it's part of why the fans love him here so much it's part of the why you know uh, younger fans love him so much because he he just brings this joy to the game but he also has this i i think when you talk again about understanding like an understanding of the moment an under he he always says it right something all, along the lines of doing what the game asks of him you know, and, and I, I just think he understands what a game is presenting, what situations present, and kind of gets what his role is and understands that he's got to step up and be that guy when his team needs it. And again, I know that sounds super cliche, but we saw it in 21. And man, we saw it here last night. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm always impressed by, by just Fernando and, and, you know, what he continues to show. And, and obviously he went through a lot. Um, you know, in 22 and then coming back last year from the suspension and the injuries. But I, I, I really, I'm, I'm very, very excited, you know, to see what, what his mid to late twenties look like and, and really the next decade or so, because I, I think there are a lot of great things ahead and, and he's going to be a, you know, a real force and a, and a real uh, kind of, you know, leading part of this team, no doubt. Pray for uh, health. Cause if he's healthy, yeah. It's going to mm-hmm. be the sky is honestly the limit for for Toddy. Uh, Sam, as always, man, terrific, terrific uh, job last night. And thanks for coming on and kind of peeling the curtain back for us. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. KWFN and KWFN HD1 San Diego. Hey, it's Chris Ello. Nobody gets along with his radio partners like I do, even Max Gravy. Listen for yourself weekdays 2 to 6 p.m. Gwen and Chris on 97.3 The Fan. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Nothing like interrupting yourself on the radio there. <laughs> just started to talk, and then I interrupted myself. I have a little secret. What I, am I doing? I keep your volume all the way down if I know you may have not heard me say something. Oh, so people didn't hear me try to talk? Correct. That's good. Yeah. Uh, all right, we got a couple of minutes to fill here before we go to the pregame like show. One. Not too much. I got Scraby working on seeing a movie called The Sting tonight with uh, Paul Newman and Robert Redford. If you're of my uh, era... It was Best Picture many years ago in the 70s, but I think, Scrape, you'll love it. If you ever saw The Sting, send him a quick note on the chat. Let him know whether uh, you think he'll like it. I think he will. I'll look forward to a report in the next few days. You're pretty good at seeing a lot of the movies, I tell you. And usually you like the ones I tell you. Is that true? 
I do. I don't send you, you know, no, off I really too far liked, off course. I really liked Capricorn one. You did like that. That one. is up my alley. Right that there. was right up your alley. And yeah. OJ has one of the best deaths in that movie. OJ pays a heavy price <laughs> in Capricorn does. one. Karma got him well, early, I you, guess. If you know Scrape, you know why he likes Capricorn one, because it's a great conspiracy movie. Ooh, That's why he exactly. loves that stuff. Um, so yeah, I try to send him back to some of the old timers that he might have missed. Um, I'm trying to do you a favor, like my dad. Uh, not that I'm your dad. I know. But I my know. dad used to do that for me. He'd say, You got to see on the waterfront. Wal Marlon Brando, 1950s. I'm like, yeah. He goes, No, it's so good. And he was always right. Alfred Hitchcock movies. You can't go wrong. Oh, I love them. You can't go wrong in an Alfred Hitchcock movie. They're I do think Psycho's a little good. overrated. That one is overrated. The rest of them are underrated. The birds. Yeah. Birds, rear window. Oh, that one is a good one. North by Northwest. They're all good. All right. Uh, we got good baseball coming up. Padres and Cubs. Sam Levitt pregame show. Remember tomorrow, make sure you're on time at 2 o'clock. It's going to be a quick half-hour show before Padre baseball. And then we're all going to go down and celebrate the Scrabinators at the <laughs> yes. ballpark tomorrow. Yes, yes, yes. For Tony, Scraby, Chris, night. <laughs>